I wish good things to you who's watching this. I am Alexei, and with me today is our well-known special guest, uh, former captain of Team Romania, Bogdan Kurkan. Hi, Bogdan. Hello, Alexei. Hello, everyone. Nice so to be here. It is going to be a special evening for a variety of reasons. We have some interesting matches to watch. Three matches, you can see them all on screen. Nalahem against Mate 11, Lawyer against Astronfio, Viv against Claudio Horquera. All of them are playoff matches for the Carcassonne Champions League, the probably most prestigious online league in existence. But before we even analyze anything, I want to... Uh, announce a giveaway. I'm not gonna make a separate video, it's just for uh, those of you who are devoted viewers. Um, we're gonna play a little prediction game. It's gonna be very simple. So if you want to win this, let me actually hold it in front of the camera properly. So this game is called Carvey. If this is a game that you will like if you're into non-competitive board games, and if you're into games published by Hans and Gluck, which is the game that, uh, w which is obviously the publishing house that's publishing house publisher, that, uh, uh, that 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 publishes Carcassonne, and this game is also quite special for me because this exact box, it's an open was my prize for the second place at the World Carcassonne Championship this year in Essen, and I am giving away that to one of you. In order to get that prize, all you need to do is predict who's going to win the championship, and actually you're going to need to predict who's going to uh, the first four places. So you can do this by at any time between now and the evening of Monday, so there is still like Friday for basically four days to do that. You can do that now between the uh, between now and the evening of Monday. You can comment either in the chat of this live stream or comment on my any videos because I will get notifications for comments. I will see them. Simply the names of four players that you think are going to take the top four spots in that exact order. Here's the catch though. Uh, because there are only so many players remaining, after Monday there are going to be only 8 players remaining. Obviously, some of you are going to have the same answers. So, if 2 or more of our viewers have the same predictions, then the tiebreaker is the timestamp. So, whoever gets makes their prediction earlier, uh, then they will be announced the winner. You can also update your predictions, but then of course the timestamp changes. So... Uh, hi, Matis. Hi, Sergey. Hi, Pichan. Hi, Vika. Uh, yeah, you see already betting on Nallerheim. It is a, quite a decent bet. And we are going to watch his name today. Hi, Vladimir. Oh, thank you on betting me losing in the finals, but I'll take it. I'll take it. Um, anyway. So uh, let's just look at the matches. No, we're not, we're not going to look at the matches. We're going to look at the playoff bracket so the way it's gonna work you can see all the players who are sort of still in the game obviously Loish is not in the game Blust is not in the game and Zikri is not in the game because we have winners in this duel and we're gonna have three winners today so you can wait until the end of today's stream if uh, to make your predictions if you want to have better information but if you want to gamble then you can comment right now, and then if you win, you win. After that, I think it's going to be on one Sunday morning, we will find out all the pairings for the quarterfinals, because it's still not clear exactly who is playing who. Uh, basically, all the eight players are going to be reshuffled, and there's going to be a new draw. So this is what's going to happen. But like In the next few days, Additional information is going to keep coming. That makes predictions easier for you. But again, the earlier uh, you, you make your prediction, the more likely you are to win the prize. Okay, we have two predictions. Oh, nice. Vladimir betting on himself. Very nice, confidently. And defeating his teammate in the finals. Um, uh, alrighty. Yeah, you decide yourselves if it is better to wait or not. But before we continue, Bogdan, uh, so whom would you bet on? Who are the top four players who are most likely to win in your view? 
Yeah, I would not pick it in order, but I would pick uh, you, someone you know, uh, self-evident, and uh, one from Musacello and Nellerheim, but I'm not sure. Let's see the, the match between Nellerheim and Matei. <laughs> well, I'm yeah, honored so... uh, to <laughs> be in your pick. I'm honored to be in your picks as well. Uh, hi, Ignacio. Um, yes, it is, it is indeed wise to predict early and then update. This is the wiser strategy. But speaking of, of match with Nellerheim, we're going to dive into it right now because it has just started. So Otto Ikonen of Finland, currently the highest rated player online, has already participated in the uh, World Championship versus Matej Tabak, who's super experienced, has very has come close to the World Championship titles on multiple occasions. As you see also, well, currently rated 525, but I think he was rated in the upper 600s and lower 700s uh, earlier this year. But, but it is the Finnish player with the green meeples who has um, the advantage of 8 points on the scoreboard, 1 meeple extra, 1 farmer deployed, uh, whereas Mate here with the blue meeples has a long road which is working for him and a couple of cities which are work in progress. So the position seems to be relatively equal as Mate finishes his road, but overall in this duel, Nalleheim versus Mate, uh, Bogdan, who do you think is the favorite and to what extent? Mm -hmm. I think it's the most interesting duel because we have here two um, players, very different players. One is uh, from classic Carcassonne, let's say, who was very good in live Carcassonne, Mate, and Nalleheim, who is the top player. I think. For online Carcassonne, Nellerheim is uh, yeah a bit better, but Matei could uh, produce the surprise, so I would not be surprised to see a decisive game here. Yeah, let's see. I uh, I'm rooting for Matei because I'm rooting for underdogs <laughs> most of the time, and uh, yeah, let's see what happens. But it was a very good start for for Nellerheim. He closed two cities uh, very quick. He dropped the first farmer, so yeah. Mate needs to catch up, but uh, I think he, he does well. Yeah, look, uh, so Nalahan finishes another city, and Mate is preparing to finish another city. Will he get a tile to do that? Uh, he gets a city cap, but not quite the city cap. Well, he gets to finish another city. Does it meeple the roads? Okay, I would meeple the road, but whatevs. Um... Yeah, of course, now Nalarheim will probably go over here, or will he? He might even just continue his loop road. I'm, I'm very curious to see if he chooses to attempt to block or just um, say, yeah, he does choose to attempt to block. One thing that Nalarheim is very, very good at, I think exceptional, is prioritization. Because very often, like most top players, they know which moves make sense logically, but it's just this particular Finnish player very often knows how to find the most important feature on board, you know, figure out when it's okay to just do quick points or when it's okay to do blocking or try and field invasion and so on and so on. So, for example, now I think he's thinking between t three moves. He could go over here and, like, start a city on the right. He could go here, although that will be a bit weirder, but he could even go over here. And I think this would be a very strong move. It looks like it sort of kind of restricts uh, the blocking square, but in fact, it also eliminates saving tiles from... He finds it! Like, how many players are going to find this move? It's so counterintuitive. It's ridiculously counterintuitive. It's... You see, he sort of makes it harder to block temporarily just because he gets better probabilities in the long run and it works immediately. Mate drew a saving tile, a tile which would help him save this meeple, right? But Nallerheim knew that and so he placed this tile over here. It's like basically very few players can see that move, which is why I think he's a massive Massive favorite to win this game. I would be surprised to see a result other than 2-0. It's just a player who is in very hot shape. But I will be rooting against him because uh, if he doesn't win, then I'm not going to have to play him at any point. And this will improve my, my uh, championship chances. Whew. Yeah, it, it, it was a great move, actually. So only the starting tile was uh, was good to defend that city. So it was really, really a good find. 
mm-hmm. for uh, for Otto. Like you you know it's a great move when it's like when there's just not enough time to explain why it works. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And there were too many tiles to to just block that city. Yeah, he had a triple city, the, the Doritos and simple cap and a lot of stuff to really block that. So yeah, it was a really really good move. Now Nalheim starts a city, of course. Whoa, Mate, I think makes some. Is that a mistake? I would say that's a mistake. Because it allows this type of move. I think uh, Mate should have tried to connect to the city, preventing Nalheim f- uh, from finishing his city cap and dropping a farmer too easily. And uh, honestly, like even that can be a deal breaker. But let's yeah. see if um, the Slovak player can do something else. Yeah, talking about prioritization, right? So now Matei just prioritized one city, which was not the highest priority for him, because it was not in danger, and uh, yeah, gave the tempo for uh, for Nellerheim with the farmer, which yeah is really important. Yeah. So they will fight for the field in the end. It seems that will be a field fight. Let's see who will have enough meeples to to get it to the end. Well, let's see. Probably not the side which has a meeple <laughs> trapped for five points in the center of the board. And maybe even not the side which has the smaller farm. Because if you're Nalarheim, a move that you should be considering is going over here and starting a new city, kind of boxing off this farmer. Because there would be only one tile that, w- that would fit into this square. You see one, yeah. Oh, oh, he does a different... Oh, that is interesting. Did you see that coming, Bogdan? <laughs> not really yeah but uh, it was really clever yeah of course so he wants now uh, to annihilate all the farmers that blue will will just drop so yeah mm-hmm. I, I didn't see it coming but yeah of course it's a very good move again but quite risky right because uh, yeah could be blocked and the blue farmer could uh... actually no it's fine so it will be a nine point farm my idea was that the, maybe the farm on the left would be larger than nine points. Mm-hmm. But yeah, let's see. But I think the main idea is kind of spatial idea to make sure that this stuff on the right it belongs to green. And again, green is completely happy to have a field fight because green has the long-term meeple advantage due to this trapped guy for five points. Like, a lot in game will be decided by that. So... If you are, mm, interesting, over farming now by Nallerheim drops yet another farmer wanting to get a curve and connect over here. Mati immediately does not drop another farmer but starts a new city, which makes sense. Nallerheim also draws the first monastery. I was going to say that if Mati is going to come back and he needs to come back, like the situation is really difficult for him, then Mate could do this by drawing and completing some monasteries because this board is super wet, many monastery spots back to back to each other, but it is uh, the Finnish player who is the first to place a monk right in the left side of the board, controlling Mate city, Mate starts another city, is about to complete his own, and we I'm pretty sure that Nalaheim is going to go either here or over here trying to obstruct the square and prevent blue from completing an easy eight point city yeah agree now it will be interesting who will take the ruin which has five points and of course a lot of potential to grow maybe it was a trap that matei just uh, opened for nellerheim but i'm sure that uh, yeah he will not just uh, take it he and spend bite. one me- yeah mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> Sounds, yeah, look juicy and maybe with other two, three points would be, yeah, an interesting feature, but yeah, it's not the important uh, feature in this game. Yeah, now that I think about this, I mean, Mate has routes to victory because the fields look menacing, but they're still, like, it's only 12 points for, okay. Uh, it's only 12 points for now, sort of, kind of, and again, the Finnish player surprises me, he just leaves the city alone and i think his goal is to grow a big field because he has over farmed his plan is to get a curve and a curve and win this field with not a plus one but plus two majority Mm -hmm. 
and then just preserve the points. And this could lead to him playing the entire game of only two or even only one meeple, but it appears that the Finn is prepared to do that. Yeah, it's enough, I think. So if he wins, uh, if there'll be one only one field, as you said, with the curve and so on, that, uh, then yeah, it's enough if he, he wins that field and maybe scoring some uh, quick points on the road. In the meantime, both players exchange blocking attacks. So while Mate tried to create a threat against Nalaheim City, uh, the Finn created a threat against this city. And I think it's now completely blockable. Yes, so probably if you're Nalerheim, I think you just go over here immediately and uh, make sure that this guy is deceased. Because uh, one, two, three, four, basically the, enough yeah. daggers have been drawn. Mm-hmm. That's that. the last, yeah. This is the last dagger, the right-handed. Yeah, I'm sure we're gonna see a blocking move. Well, mm -hmm. actually, I'm not sure because one thing that Otto might be considering is the fact that there are very few city caps remaining. There's in fact only one vanilla city cap that goes here and one splitter. But he decides not to take the chances and just make sure that the block is immediate and. Um, Mate has no problem dropping farmers left and right. Uh, and also has no problem being ahead on the scoreboard. Yeah, but as you said, there are not so many city caps left. So the daggers are all out, for example, and all yeah, also the city caps are out. So I don't see how Mate could score enough points to come back with monasteries, but yeah. There are a lot of uh, triple city tiles, for example, stuff like this, and starting a ruin does not help. So I don't see yeah, um, interesting features for Mate to, to really compensate with the fields. In the meantime, hi Glovier, hi Vladu, hi Edgar, hi Pavlo. Since we have uh, many more viewers, once uh, uh, and as Nalaheim is thinking, I think I should remind that I'm giving away this game of Carvey to whoever of you predict who's going to win the championship by Monday European evening. Make sure to comment who you think are going to be the top four players in this league. The earlier you comment, the better tiebreakers you get in case somebody else predicts the same winners as you. Um, but of course, the later you comment, you will get more information as players get further and further eliminated. So yes, giving up a game sort of kind of spontaneously. Uh, Mate now blocks... Well, not blocks, but make it much harder for Nalerheim to complete the city. However, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, there's not enough Doritos to simply cut this shape. So it does seem that this meeple stuck here for a long time. Nalerheim is now getting a curve. Might go over here, connect all the farmers. Might go over here, connect the farmers here. Or might just leave the curve alone and build up the monastery first. So let's check our prioritization against the highest rated player on board game arena. Ah, too late. I was going to ask you, Bogdan, but would you have done the same or <laughs> would you have played the curve, curve elsewhere? Uh, yes, I would place it in the same place because it's very important to secure the field from my point of view and discourage the opponent to, to further place uh, farmers. So I think the field is big enough, in, and if I discourage my opponent uh, to not place farmers and score other points, and I, do, I don't really see other places, mm -hmm. then it's uh, it's like uh, yeah, a game over. In the meantime, Monte I guess creates a platform for further field invasion. Nalaheim takes three coin points, but I was surprised that with this move earlier, Nalaheim did not block this connection over here and. I'm not sure if that's not a mistake, because uh, it does seem that it is in Green's interest to, well, assume that Green might want to obstruct Blue City, but at some point, surely Green must want to stick in something over here to prevent Blue from getting into the field like this and then maybe dropping another farmer. Yeah, agree. 
Actually, I did not understand that straight line from, from Nellerheim. Oh, uh, I understand. It's psychological. It's basically hmm. trying to trick your opponent to think that you miscounted the tiles. Hmm. So that's, really? So that's, yeah, so that Mate spends a move on defending. This is exactly what it is. I'm, I'm like, I'm hundred, almost 100% 100 certain. And I would do the same. <laughs> like, I would do the same. Because if you have a useless tile, or relatively, I didn't think it was useless. I think he should have gone really? here. Really? Exactly. Exactly. It was not useless. Yeah, I, yeah. I understand your, yeah, your theory, but yeah. I think Matei knows that there is no dagger there. Come on. <laughs> um, but yeah. It was worth to try, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, again, yeah. Yeah. I, I thought... Uh, so Nelheim placed again the straight line on the left, right? Yes. Maybe. Okay. I have a feeling that maybe he wants to kind of gamble and be a bit patient. Maybe he decided that there are situations where his win conditions is actually trying to eat up this farmer. But uh, careful what you wish for if you're the player with the green meeples, because there are some situations how blue manages to drop a farmer over here, crossroads over here, and then just equalize. Mm -hmm. But Nelheim keeps, yeah. yeah, exactly. Nelheim keeps to yeah to draw the the caps, the remaining caps, and uh, I'm really curious what uh, will he do with this one, because starting a new city, yeah, exactly. It's not a yeah. good option. Well, I, I thought he could have used it as a blocking tile as well on the left, but oh, there's a better blocking tile. I presume he can now go here. I don't think... I think it's a worthy investment of a Dorito just to kill this guy off for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the splitting tile is not in the game anymore. Yes, because like the, mm -hmm. in games with lots of farmers, every meeple is like gold. Exactly. And would be the yeah the third meeple already blocked for blue, which is a yeah great handicap. Let's see. Of course, <laughs> it yeah. doesn't. Blue connects again. Now I'm just completely unperturbed. <coughs> oh, but but Mate decides to block himself. It doesn't make sense to me. Does he see an alternative win condition? Because basically he decided not to pursue this point and not to drop more farmers. Maybe he thinks that this counter field is going to be enough, but it has three cities. There are nine points over here, and they're like, he has 10 points scattered across cities. So that's 19 plus 5, that's plus 24. But Nalheim has a seven point monastery, a one point city, that's eight, so that's 21. And he has one, two, three, four, five, six. Ah, this field is smaller. So technically, technically, at the moment, green is losing three points if I counted this correctly. But I think this attempt to win like that uh, by Mate is a bit too optimistic because Nalaheim has lots of potential. He can still have uh, a meeple back because there's still multiple monasteries remaining in play that go into these squares beautifully and it's very hard to abstract. And he can also get something here as well, which he's trying to do. Mate, I presume, will bother him. <clears throat> no, he doesn't. Ooh, he goes for quick points. This is interesting. He basically wants to draw the one remaining crossroad tile that fits over here and just get his road done. This is an interesting move. And if Nalheim goes here, he can still get his road done if he gets the one road Dorito that goes over here and the crossroads over here. Which is why if you're Nalheim, you probably just ignore this guy and um, simply build up your city to get more points. That's precisely yeah, what I would it probably does. prioritize. Yeah, exactly. Prioritize the city. 
presumably one more city move here by Nalerheim, but which one? Let's see what he plays. Uh, probably will need to calculate out all the remaining tiles. He could also go drop a farmer over here at some point. There's a nice connection spot to a nine point field. Still some one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Actually, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ooh, no regular road tiles remaining. No straight lines, no curves. So this connection here on the left, which looks interesting, might be harder to implement than it seems. But surely the Finnish player sees that. I think that Mate is still ahead like three points. As it stands now. But again, it's, it's so hard to be Mate because Nalaheim, for example, has this city cap right in the middle of his field and there's still vanilla city caps. Well, there's one vanilla city cap remaining that goes over here. So Nalaheim has like has one seven point move that, that can occur if he draws that tile. So this is interesting how the side with fewer points is by far the favorite just because uh, of the threats, or is it? So now currently Mate is two points ahead, gets his road meeple back, brilliant idea here by the Slovak player, Nalerheim now gets his seven points with the city cap, and now he's five points ahead. Now life is hard if you're Mate, how do you get five points? Maybe like this, it's a beautiful tile that allows you to take four points, and now you're gonna be down only minus one. Maybe something can be done about that. Exactly. He takes four points. And now I think I lost few frames <laughs> from your. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Uh huh. So, one point ahead is the Finnish player, unless I'm mistaken. Then surely this move should seal the deal. There'll be a six-point move with a monastery with a chance to even get a meeple back. And then where exactly does Mate get seven points? It is possible. It is possible. So let's say Nalaheim goes here. Meeple's the monastery. I think he has to. He's going to be plus seven. Then Mate is going to go here. He's going to be plus six. And then... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, it looks like Mate is going to come up a couple of points short. Almost like no matter what. And this is just fascinating. Unless I miss something. And I think the one remaining tile is some sort of s starting tile, I think. Yeah, so Mari does get the monastery. Currently down one point. Nalaheim gets the city cab. I'm gonna go over here, presumably, or over here even. Yeah, another starting tile. Probably gonna go over here. And a one point win. I think it's a one point win for the Finnish player, unless I'm mistaken. I ch okay, so, so I'm, I am being corrected in the chat. It was plus six for green at some point, but let's just see if we're right or not. All we know is that Nalaheim must have won this. Twenty-one point field in the middle, nine point field for. Okay, so it's a six point win afterwards. So thanks, Vladimir, for accurate counting. Yeah, I can't. Ooh. Okay, now I have a horse in the race. So, as a result of this, Nalaheim is now rated eight hundred and sixty-two. Uh, the highest in classical Carcassonne on board game arena is eight hundred and sixty-three, achieved a few months ago. Uh, on two separate occasions by yours truly. So, basically, <laughs> I now need him to lose this game so that he doesn't surpass my record. <laughs> uh, 
Wow, but um, I think well-deserved win this time because it just so many so many subtle strategic moves, especially with that block earlier on with the counterintuitive defense and then with the, all the fields. So let's see if the Slovak player has something to respond. I hope he does. Well, he is not the starting player, which is not helpful. Um, it says the Finn who is the starting player and starts with a two-point advantage. Interesting. Does the Slovak player know the move, the most common response at the top level these days is actually to meeple this curve facing inwards to the city let me actually real quick see yeah yeah close game they're saying about the previous game we know that okay mate knows his stuff of course he is a veteran player and the finn will presumably continue his road which is exactly what happens city splitter city cap for mate 11 I can't know where this is going. I like the high risk move going over here and uh, meepling the upper city cap and pre building. And yes, 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 yes. This is so satisfying to watch. Would you like this is a high risk move because basically whoever gets the tile that fits into this square gets six or even eight points. Uh, what do you think about an early committal move like this, Bogdan? Yeah, unfortunately, I'm losing some frames. I think I have some lag <laughs> uh, with the with your mm. video, and I I'm losing some moves. So I'm one or two moves behind, <laughs> uh, unfortunately. And I opened uh, in parallel the the game in board game arena. So um, you can ask now the question because <laughs> I have the the current situation. Oh yeah, so the question was like about this configuration over here, because I like this move by Mate, I suggested it, but it's also so very committal because basically it's a decision to flip for the triangle tile that fits into this square. Mm -hmm. uh, Vladimir is asking about 900 ELO. I never yeah, had I think one it was a good defense by, by Blue there, right? Yeah, I, I, I love the, loving the move by Blue. Uh, Nalaheim didn't bite, didn't decide to go just there. Okay, now he wants to break it, but now Mate is kind of forced to... Actually, he's not forced to. Like, I wouldn't go here. If I'm Mate, yes, exactly. I'm just finishing the city calmly. He has the good probabilities for this meeple to make out alive, but Nalaheim is the first one to draw an eight-point city, and with that, a substantial lead on the scoreboard. So it looks like my record is not going to survive for a long time. <laughs> Speaking yeah, of my record, um, I wasn't the one who had but, 900 yeah. ELO. There was a player who had 900 ELO, that's Sebastian Trunz uh, with the screen name Lam Koile, but he only plays expansions, which is not quite the same game. Mate pre-finishes his road very nicely. Also, there are some backdoor ideas of getting a splitter, getting this meeple back, and then getting a triangle and blocking the green meeple towards this square. Uh, Mate now making a blocking move against the lonely city piece of Nalaheim. But what does Nalaheim care? He has a plus 11 lead on the scoreboard. And keeps scoring uh, easy points, so... Not bad. I did not see many bad moves by Matei, right? So he, yeah, he showed a nice uh, carcass on this evening, but yeah, Nelheim was just a bit stronger. Are oh, you mean in the opening or in the last game? In the last game and also in the opening here, I didn't see too many really weird moves, <laughs> but also in the last game, so it was really tight and I, uh, yeah. Oh, I really in, in the opening, it. I think here Mate plays strongly, but in the last game, I think there was that deal breaker mistake with the prioritization where he rushed to You're finish right. his safe city. And that's what allowed Nalaham to take a stronghold on the field. That was a strategic mistake. So, um, it was really that one move that turned uh, the whole game, I think. And of course, before that, the, the nice find with the sort of 
with the changing of blocking probabilities with that Dorito with the road move, they're just a pure beauty mm -hmm. by the Finnish player, who's currently now 13 points ahead on the scoreboard as a result of two quick road points. Presumably <laughs> going to continue his city at the bottom with this juicy shielded tile. Mate can probably finish his city and me. Okay, how do you not meeple that road? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Am I, 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 it's not. It's not just me, right, Bogdan? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I don't That's know. What... The Slovak player appears to be slipping because it's just donating a point to Green with uh, really, and Green doesn't even have to work for it now that Green even finished this city. He's doing very, very well. But the first monastery comes to Mate, and whoever has the first monastery has the opening advantage, according to your brother Bogdan. <laughs> I remember yeah, that but, phrase a lot. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so he thinks, uh, yeah, like that. But uh, it, it's, uh, yeah, not not opening anymore. Let's say so. It's already the the second third of the game, exactly. more or less, right? We're definitely in the middle game. However, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, exactly. He can he can oh, do this. Second monastery. He gets a third, fourth, fifth, sixth curve, <laughs> and suddenly it's like fifty points for no reason. So it is absolutely possible. Come on, Mate, you can do this. Give us a show and uh, keep my record intact, okay? Because I'm currently uh, not in great shape. I'm like in my mid seven hundreds. I, I I don't like play for Elo. I just play because I play but then if I were to do that I would have to like grind a lot and also get better at this game which I'm also keep postponing mm. so awkward tile for the Finn presumably that will be placed over here to burden blues meeple a little bit could also be placed over here to burden this blues meeple Let's see what he decides to do. Yeah. Mm, interesting. interesting. Uh, I, f yeah, 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 yeah. He wants to build a big ruin. I think with that triple city early on, he could just eat up the the blue uh, meepo on the city because yeah, there is one splitter still in the game, and uh, maybe he wanted to just block that meepo, but yeah. He decides that this ruin is uh, <clears throat> is enough for take a quite a good advantage. Oh, look and he at keeps this. drawing these tiles with shield tiles. <laughs> yeah, but these are actually really good, and I think there's a variety of options for them. He could go here, but honestly, if I were Nalaham, I would go here. I would really burden this square exactly. And so now Matze is going to ask, okay. How is he getting this meeple back? He's now building up his monasteries, but he's forced to deal with subpar tiles. And uh, uh, it's certainly the Finn has successfully stopped the onslaught of these monasteries. Uh, of course, Blue still has an advantage of two monasteries versus one, but there are no more future monastery squares as a result of all of that. So this is certainly a W for the Finnish player. Uh, hi Ludo, hi Jonas, hi Alfonso, hi uh, La Casa del Sons. Since we have many more viewers, as Nalaheim starts a new city and Mate draws another city cap to start yet another city, I will need to remind you that we're doing a giveaway. I'm giving away this copy of a game called Carvey to those of you who predict the winner of this championship. You can comment either on this live stream or um, at any on, or any of my videos by Monday European evening. And... Um, you just need to comment the, uh, who is going to take the first four spots in the championship. Nalahai now gets a city cap. Presumably going to go over here. Could also go over here. Let's see how the Finn's prioritization is doing. What would you, Bogdan, do here? This. Meeple? I would take the three points. I would take the. Yeah, I would take the three points on the road and uh, put it on on top. So I there are there is a still one starting tile right, 
and a bunch of uh, Doritos with, oh, okay, with road. Hmm. So what do we know? I don't he... think that was the, mm, yeah, of course, yeah. He knows better maybe, but uh, yeah, I would just uh, have done it differently because now, for example, blue could uh, just block to the starting tile, the city on top and could just place the, um, uh, the Dorito with road and complete his road, right? I think so, yes, yes, yes. But I think Nauerheim's idea here is just to get Meeple's back as soon as possible, and he probably decided that it's okay to just keep this Meeple completely dead. In the meantime, an important tile for Mate, he manages to connect to this ruin and also to finish his monastery Meeple. Now, he's only nine points behind, and he can absolutely fight, for example, if he finishes the city and drops a farmer, probably known as the biggest threat in Carcassonne, but I'm pretty sure that the Finnish player has played long enough to prevent that exactly. He was thinking how he's likely to do this, and he chose to start a new city. Oh, interesting oh. move by Mate. Also meepling this farm, I actually quite yeah. like it. Uh, and getting his road meeple back, coming close on the scoreboard, suddenly the Slovak player is turning this around as a result of these two monasteries. And there is a way um, for blue to block uh, the meeple on the left for the ruin because there are no Doritos, simple Doritos and also the triple cities. Uh, with uh, field are out and he could just block with one curve simple curve and he could just overtake the ruin right two versus one ah yes 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 that's a great point because even though technically technically uh this city over here is tied it's not like really tied because this green meeple has not connected here yet but at some point, blue might connect over here and then make it harder for green to connect over here. But Nalaham gets a fantastic tile yeah, ball. Actually, he could yeah, block it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, but he So he needs... keeps building the his field and. Yeah. At a cost, because now there is uh, an attacking spot against said field. So I'm pretty sure that at some point mm -hmm. now Heim's gonna, no, Mate is gonna go over here, drop a farmer, try to connect, which is why, if you are the Finn, is it crazy to go here? Yes, it is, says Otto, and just places the tube tile to get two extra points up top. Okay, now this is the move. So either we block, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six. The block doesn't work, so I think as the Slovak player, you have to go here and invest a meeple to neutralize this green guy, to not let it connect to the Ruin. The Ruin is worth enough points to justify a greedy move like this, especially with four meeples uh, in hand. Where else are you going to use these meeples? Exactly. So the Ruin is big enough to invest, you're right. Also, is this threat with the... Oh, okay, the field grows and grows now. <laughs> um... Four points for the Monastery. And as Mate now, I mean, do you just... Do you just forego the city cap and just simply drop a farmer here right now? Yeah, he decides to yes, do that. Yes, yes. <laughs> because just like mm -hmm. the field is so mm -hmm. important that... Uh... Mm -hmm. But then again, you know what What can what Nalerheim can do? He can get a city, a regular city cap, go here and just drop his last farmer and then wait for a curve and connect to the farm whilst completing his monastery. Yeah, but not with this style and I think that uh, Mate has the chance to do that. And has the yeah the more meeple. I think this in this game Mate is uh, yeah is in a bit of better position <laughs> um, now. So I, I would think say he will sacrifice so, yeah. the second farmer. Mm -hmm. Well. Oh. Ho, 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 ho. oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oof. <laughs> Oh, that's and, rough, 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 rough. And there is oh. one monastery with road, right? <laughs> yeah, so there's a monastery with road. This was a okay. beautiful farmer here by the Slovak player. This is one like those old school <laughs> guys who have been around the block for years. They know how to play field. Like if if that's the one thing how they're going to destroy you is by farmers like this. High probability farmer now connecting with extra four points of value. Just that 
it's, it's, it's always nice to have that cherry on top. This guy still has two entry spots. It's now very hard for green because green is also losing this ruin no matter what. He has the city trap for a long time. Well, surely this road meeple is going to come back. But if you're Nalerheim, do you take a gamble right now and do you farm? No, not yet. He decided that needs to no, take the points first. No, not yet because there are there are not simple crossroads in the game. So there was very easy to block. For, from one side, then the monastery. Mm -hmm. So if I were Matei now, I would just block the monastery. Just because, go over here, right? Yeah, the green right. needs meeple to... Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Great so just, move yeah, here. Exactly. I would just sacrifice. Can Nalarheim close the city on top? Are there enough tiles? Left, I think so, right? So... Yep. Starting tile? No. There's Crossroads. no starting tile. Yeah. And a dagger. Crossroads, yeah. Mm -hmm. Crossroads dagger. Something like this. So the, so it's as possible. Dagger, I guess yeah. if you're Nalaham, you just still go there. And then you want to try drop something. Drop a farmer here whilst you still can. Yep. And I, 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 as a result of his plays, I need to keep moving the map. Now it's time to block that city. <clears throat> no, why? Okay, so I would just have blocked it now. What Narheim could do, just defend his city for well, this, actually. Uh, I love the move by Mate here yeah, because the point was and, to prevent uh, to prevent the field connection opportunity. Well, uh, or, or do you think that Narheim can somehow finish the city and then win without the field? I don't think there's quite enough. I think he needs to he needs to equalize the field and finish the city. Yeah, I also think so. For those of you who are leaving your predictions in the chat, just to remind you that you need to predict the top four spots, not just the winner of the entire uh, Champions League. Uh, so then your guess is going to be registered. And of course, you can change your guess, but then the timestamp also changes and your chances of winning the board game Carvey also go down. Okay. Yes, Nalaheim defends. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mate tries to attack. Nalaheim does not get a tile which he really wants. Now he needs to decide. Does he go over here and take four points simply to create two field connection opportunities? Um, because if he goes over here, he creates a field and he can drop a farmer here in the future. Or does he just YOLO it and place this tile at the top with the intention of completing his city at all cost? Yeah, I don't know. I I would just uh, drop it on top if I, I were never home. Mm, I think I see an idea. So if we drop it on top, we hope to complete the city and then the way we connect to the farm is through here through a vanilla city cap through this square an alternative also is to go here with a dorito tile with a dorito with a road tile and drop a farmer like this through the outside of a curve but nalaham decided that this is not for him he wants this field access as soon as possible Well, this is interesting. Nalaham gets some points over here. Now has a six point ruin to almost compensate this ruin over here. Mate gets three points for the road. Approaches Nalaham on the scoreboard, but of course it's this part that matters. Let's see what he does here. So do you just take more points or at this point, do you go here? I think you go here and try to finish your city because there's still one dagger that fits into this square. There is a dagger, yes. Yeah, but do I have in... Yeah, there is a dagger, but do I have enough time to close the city and also to attack and uh, take the farm? I'm, I think I so, yes, think so, yes, right? yes. <clears throat> so Is it enough time? Okay. Mm -hmm. So we, we go here now. Next move. Yeah. 
we go here, Dagger. and we're going to have two moves after that. Mm -hmm. Then okay. we go here and here. Like, this is our plan to win the game. Unlikely? Probably happens like about 3% of the time, but green has equity here. Let's just see if it has, something, it has anything better than 3%. <laughs> also, since there's so many of you, this is a reminder to meeple the like button. It helps with the algorithm a lot and boosts confidence, and it will help us to uh, reach a thousand subscribers, the coveted Mindstone, much sooner. No, Nalaham just takes four points. He does Oof. not want this. Mate takes different four points. Okay, so he now wants to attack the field, right? Well, mm -hmm. surely. But, ah, this style doesn't work. Oof. Oh, this is painful. Because I think he sort of needs to go here and take this nine-point field. But then he can't connect. War. He can go here, drop No, yeah, there are no crossroads. There are no crossroads indeed. But, like, he needs to take this nine-point field defensively because then Mate is going to take it and win. So maybe he wants to go over here and try to connect like this to the field through a dagger. Mm, this is possible. But then the problem is that Mate just takes nine points over here. And I think not M Nalerheim equalizing the field is not enough. Because blue still has the r ruin and this field here. However, green has the monastery and this ruin and this ruin. Hey, maybe this is enough. Maybe we win, th maybe we win the game by going here. Or, we can go here, simply drop a farmer for the sake of taking 9 points, and we can still finish the city with back-to-back -back city caps, because there are two city caps remaining. There's a dagger and there's a vanilla. This is, of course, a 16% chance, but it ain't bad. Oh, he goes for the 50-50, he goes for the Fields connection. Now Mate, oh beautiful, beautiful, I knew it, I knew it. Mate now takes 9-point field and now I have gets the dagger! He connects into the field, this is just spectacular. And maybe Mate was a bit premature, he should have calculated the toss because instead of dropping a farmer here, he could have dropped the farmer here and connected through the outside of a curve. I think this could have worked because now I think it's not enough for blue. I think green is actually winning this. Hmm. Yeah. Players are play saying something in the chat. Yeah, Mate is saying, saying a sort of sad smiley, but I think it's not on luck, it's on him. Because I know that there's a vanilla city cap remaining. Well, yeah. He had to go here. This this nine point field was a trap. Exactly. Yeah. In, he had to in, go for uh, the invasion. For the counter threat like this, it's it would have been a beautiful, mm. beautiful idea. And this was completely unblockable and very hard to trace as well. So as a result, so with this with his last two move, Mate got nine plus two points, eleven points instead of getting 18 points. Let's see if these seven points, oh no, 21 points. So let's see if these 10 points will make the difference. I think they will. I think the Slovak player had a win, but rushed it. Oh, wait a second. I see in the chat somebody saying draw. So this nine point field uh, is a draw, which means that Mate wins. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> the game is tied. We're headed to a decider and I am still the one with the highest elo ever. Okay. Thank you so much, Mate. You're the best, made my day. And uh, I mean, Otto eventually is going to overthrow, overthrow me, but he needs to work for it. But also, I think this was actually a mistake because Mate only Crazy won. Game. 
It's a crazy game, right? Mate only achieved the draw because he drew a shielded tile on the last move. Had the tiles been reversed, Mate would have scored one city point and Nalaheim would have scored two city points and Nalaheim would have won by two points. So in fact, the Slovak player got massively lucky over here and um, again, close call by not finding this field invasion. Difficult to find, but hey, I'll take it. I'll take it. Uh, why am I so happy about this? It's just ELO. It doesn't mean nothing. I'm still very happy. <laughs> very happy. Okay. So just a reminder that, of course, there are no ties in this format. If the game is tied, then the starting player loses the game. In this game, Nalaheim was the starting player. Now? Mate was the starting player starting the road in an interesting direction definitely uncommon these days the most common op opening is pointing upwards and the old school player knows best dropping a farmer on his second move they, they love that kind of thing let's see how he plays this out So I'm going to update the score in the meantime. Do we have any, uh, can anybody in the chat let us know how is the lawyer versus a strong field doing? Because they must have started. Uh, are there any finished games? Nalaheim scores four points for the city cap is the first on the scoreboard whilst Mate starts a new city in a way which very neatly continues his road. and continues his road some more. Malaheim now, of course, knows his stuff. Many beginner to intermediate level players would be tempted to continue his city, but that's a mistake. Instead, the move is to go over here, start a new city, pointing leftwards probably. Yes, exactly. Not the most obvious find, but it is what it is. A quadruple city tile for the Slovak player. Very handy to break green city before green draws a tile this tile to finish its city so very time sensitive game it seems straight line for the slovak player will we see will we see one point or will we see a blocking attack we we'll see a blocking move instead i like the prioritization here beautiful move here by the finnish player restricting the potential of blue's farmer blue now makes a move to block Nalaheim, but actually Nalaheim is happy about that. He has a seven point ruin, which he's happy to continue. And this ruin restricts so much of Mate's space on this farm. Now Mate, in order to <clears throat> get his field points needs to work really hard. Luckily he draws the dream tile that starts a city in his field, continues his road and also opens up so many green squares. Nalaheim is the first one to draw a monastery, six point monastery, beautiful spot. Also going to have some tempo squares if he gets some sort of city tile that fit over here and over here. Maybe he gets a triple city and another triple city and another monastery. And as a result, he gets to have a boatload of points. In the meantime, Mate is trying to build a sort of flower shaped city with a bit of an extension. Hoping to get easy 12 or 14 points on the right let's see if the finnish player has something to say about that maybe he's gonna go over here put some pressure or maybe he decides that it is not worth it and instead he's just going to continue his one point road knowing nalaheim i'm pretty sure he's gonna go over here but who knows we have been surprised on multiple occasions in his duel he just chooses to take one point he says i don't care you can finish your city all you want <clears throat> both players are playing so fast that I'm getting overly excited in announcing all the action. So I, my voice is starting to get strained. Can you just take over the announcement for uh, for a second, Bogdan, if you are now not experiencing any lags? Sure, I hope so. Can you hear me well? Because I, I had some, <laughs> uh, some issues with the connection. Yeah, we're I'm, good, we're good. I'm audible? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Go ahead. Yeah. So yeah. So now uh, Nalerheim tried to to block the city on the left for um, for Mate. Mate draws uh, a monastery, but uh, he has no really good spot to to drop it, and he he played it for yeah trying to attack the city of uh, of Nalerheim. 
Now the second monastery for green, and he has a good spot for it, and he just played it. Somehow uh, dominating the road of, of blue. Uh, I think, yeah, green is in a slight advantage here with the monasteries, and uh, also the ruin. Nellerheim <laughs> drawing the third monastery. Um, quite interesting. Let's see if he has a really good place to drop it. It's a last meeple, though, so I would not uh, meeple it. And of course, he used it to um, to defend the city. Easy points, quick points, and also it's a two-purpose move. Uh, four points and also uh, defend the city. <clears throat> for Mate, they are really playing fast now. The dagger for Mate now. It's not the right dagger, but uh, he could uh, just... Uh, place it in, on his city. This is one option. The other, so he still has one meeple advantage, but uh, Nellerheim has uh, monasteries. Okay, interesting choice. There are still two tiles there. And he just tries to, to finish that 12-point uh, city. Now with the Dorito, so this... <laughs> This ruin on top uh, becomes very, very interesting. And four points are from, from the opponent. Uh, and, yeah. I think at some point, uh, Mate just wants to to equalize it, if possible. Okay, some blocking attempts from Mate. Then another city tile for Nerheim. Maybe he will continue. Okay, he wants to disturb a bit the, the road. Fantastic move. Very Mate, interesting move fantastic. here. So, but yeah, 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 transforms that city in a ruin. But it's a potential for that. Do we still have daggers with road? I think so too, right? Yeah. Uh, not daggers, sorry, uh, the triangles, Doritos with road. Oh, okay, that's a fantastic tile for blue now. Also getting some points from the road, and it's a city on the on his field, so it's a yeah fantastic tile. So with this one, so I think that Nalarheim does not bother if he will have in the end two ruins uh, worth I know ten points each or so. <laughs> so it's not that bad. So I think at some point he might close the the road for blue and extend the ruin. With the triple city, there is only one tile left. Uh, triple city with road to extend the ruin on on the bottom. So in the meantime, Mate is ahead by ten points, but we have of course the monasteries from green, and uh, Mate has also some interesting roads. So equalizing more or less the monasteries, and uh, I would say that blue has an advantage here. Also with the meeples that he has right now in hand, Green chooses to, to take for easy points and not to extend the, the ruin. I'm sort of surprised okay, by that choice, decision. that's interesting, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it, it yeah, sort of pays yeah, yeah, off yeah. because then Mate would have taken these four points instead. Exactly. <gasps> it's oh. eight point difference, so... But this is such a deep move because it's also a spatial move. It restricts the field. Just compare this farmer how it is now and how it would have been if there were a regular curve. It just eliminates all the green squares. And now when Nalaheim goes over here, this will definitely restrict the field even further. I assume Nalaheim goes over here, but what do I know? I think so, yeah. I think it's not that bad, so a 9 point uh, or even 12 maybe, because we still have some uh, some space on the left. Um, yeah, it's not a bad uh, field. Oh, so Mate does not draw this gap with the road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, honestly, I'm a bit critical of Mate's move over here. I think... It's just being a bit overzealous starting a new farm like this and now I'm just immediately, immediately punishes for that. I think a strong move from Mate that would have made life really painful for Nalaheim was to just start a new city. Start a new city normally like on uh, mm -hmm. and uh, start an attack on this square. So 
just the result of this, so before that I preferred blue, just the result of this exchange I prefer green now, because this farmer is just sad. I know, yeah, um... yeah, 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 true. But with that splitter, I think uh, Mate could just have attacked the ruin on top. What do you think? But there are already nine points. Is it oh, worth it attacking worth and it? equalizing that? I don't know. I kind of like not? the idea sort of so... gambling over here. It's like there is just leaving an eight point city up for grabs. And the idea is okay, if, if I take it, I take 11 <laughs> points because it's eight points plus three points for the field. But if you take it, it's five points for you because you take eight points and you give me points for the field. What a move by Whoa, Nauheim. Very nice style. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so this pays off. 11 yeah. point move, eight points for the city, a lead on the scoreboard. But as a result, this city has an entry point, which Nauheim might use. I guess if you're green. Yeah, he first of all wants to take care of his meeple, so that's why he uh, built up his monastery in this particular order. Hmm. Well, well, well. A prioritization. Uh, should attack now. So he, yeah. Mm -hmm. he should attack the city, I think, on the this left. One, yeah. Instead of finishing this yeah. one. I, I like this prioritization as well, <clears throat> but like several moves, he could attack the city, he could take four points, creating another platform for attack, he could just finish his city. I think attacking the city, I really like this idea, however, still one splitter is, is in play, and if blue draws the splitter then, then, well, green is in a difficult position, so green now <laughs> takes four points for the road. Mate gets a fantastic tell, a second farmer for sure. Eight points mm -hmm. for the city, three points for the field, insurance farmer, and blue is doing really well in this position. Are we going to see an upset? Are we going to see an upset? This is something else. I think so. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think so. So I, I really like blue's, blue's position here. This is the last uh, yeah, free city with the road. So we will end up in, with this five point road. For uh, for Mati. I think that Nellerheim has a bad time now, <laughs> so he thinks how to yeah, to use the meeples that he has in hand to take uh, yeah to sneak into this already 12 point or maybe 15 point field. Mati is just <laughs> starting new cities and uh, does not bother with what he he leaves behind. Again, like a same really... flip, right? So whoever gets a starting tile or something, <laughs> either blue gets eleven points or uh, green gets five points. Same sort of situation. And as a result, green was forced to spend a tile on not his ruin, but something like this. So um, it's um, a concession that green was forced to make. So it's basically blue just earned him two additional points. Exactly. So what do you do for Nalaham? Do you just calmly take one point for your city or do you just go over here and attack the field straight away with the risk of getting blocked? It's quite risky to attack that field now with this style. Well, actually, How many I kind of like it. Are there because we might... Okay. There's a dagger. There's still there's still one of these guys remaining, like one of the daggers. So let's say if he goes over here and if Mate draws like a city tile, then Nanaheim's still going to have one tile that fits into here. But if that happens, then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, um, then Mate can draw like back to back curves that bring this farmer into the field. It's a spatial idea that is there. Yeah. Exactly. And I'm pretty sure that Nanaheim exactly. sees that. But now that I think he kind of has to go for it. Yeah. I mean, you have four meeples, just just do it. Of course, you need... mm -hmm. exactly. And one uh, observation, there are no tiles with uh, two city and road. So all the uh, Doritos with road, all the tri uh, triple city with road tiles mm -hmm. are out. 
So that guy, uh, I don't know, two or three point. Is that a shield? Yeah, it's a three point. Okay. Yes. I knew it. I knew it. He drops it like Whoa. this so that he wants to create a second platform. And then and the second farmer, it. right? <laughs> He's going to do it. He's going to do it. Wait, one, two, three, yeah, four, five, six, sure. seven, eight. Yes, there's still one. Yeah, the thing one, is two, that. Four, five, six, seven, yeah. yeah. There's still one curve, only one curve remaining, but you gotta it. go for Yolo. it. <laughs> is this the only chance he has? I think so, uh, yeah, just this field the is risk, so good. Though. Yeah. Because Mate has, has threats, yeah. like Mate can at any point decide to attack the city, for example, and just gain mm -hmm. himself nine easy points, relatively easy. Santi Blair is asking, what is the highest elo of all time? In classical Carcassonne, it's 863, and Nalaheim today got to 862. And overall in Carcassonne, it's 900 something, uh, because of... Sebastian Trons who plays expansions. Uh, also, we get news from. Uh, okay, that's the, that's the chance. That's the chance. This is incredible. So Mate now gets his meeple back, and he's about to bring a yeah. second farmer. But now Heim's now surely going to finish and drop a farmer. And now the field fight is on. Um, there are still tall that fit into this square. Mate now, ooh, it connects his farmer. But now now is going to go over here. He's going to drop more farmers. More farmers. Let's go. I don't like this orientation, actually. I think it may have been a, too rush of a misstep. I mean, dare I criticize the highest rated player online, but if we just turn the city cup the other way, then we make sure that uh, we bring these farmers into the field in such a way that doesn't give anything back. Mate now. Oh, that's too risky because... Uh... There are a lot of uh, crossroads, right, in play. Yes. That's uh, at least two. That was risky. But, but I think I know uh, the logic. The logic <laughs> is that now I need a crossroads over here. And he might be yeah. not that tempted to go here. But wait a second. There are no curves. This was the ninth, ninth curve. There are no Doritos. There, I think, uh, one, two, three, four. Okay, there are two daggers, right? So... Mm -hmm. Mate yeah, is hoping are still in play. to draw one of two daggers It's a high before... chance, actually, yeah. Yeah, before Nalaheim draws one of the two crossroads, uh, it's it's a it's a low prob investment. It's a really low prob investment. But on the other hand, Mate has loads of meeples. He can afford the zero-point farmer. Yeah, but does he need that? Maybe he could invest in, I don't know, maybe equalizing the... Okay, now. Dum dum dum. <laughs> okay. Interesting uh, one, throw. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, that's easy, right? No, sh is it easy? I mean, we go here and protect the field invasion, or we just take seven points as Nalaheim, because actually there they aren't that many blocking tiles. This block only looks scary, but look at this. All the big tiles are sort of on the board anyway, all eight of them, and yeah, there's like. One Dorito, two Doritos. Okay, two Doritos for blocking. So, if you're Nalahai, maybe you're just not bothered and just gonna go over here. Yeah, or here. Little. And we still have straight lines, right? How many? So it's four, five, six. Two three. straight lines, right? Two straight lines, two crossroads. So I see mm -hmm. that it might be tempting to go here kind of protect that spot, but I think he's better off either taking points or just going here and bringing that farmer and just like going all in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because again, he's more likely to draw one of the four tiles that fit into that square before... Oh, wow! <laughs> That's cool. a clever defense because there's no triple city. Mm-hmm. Wow, that is beautiful. But Nellerheim does not draw any road. This is crazy. He's happy with that. He now gets his farmers in. 
Mate has only one tile that gets into this square. I guess Mate has now... Mate must go here and drop a Pharma and hope for the last Dorito. So that he gets to connect here. Yeah. And there's also one Vanilla City Cap. Honestly, it's just... But then... He needs to win the field. Even tying the field, I think, is not enough. I mean, this is so entertaining. <laughs> okay, we're saying we're being corrected. There's only one straight road remaining. So it's, I mean, still three tiles okay. fit into that square. Still works. Do it. Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Go here. Or actually, what's... Uh, ooh, there's another option. Maybe we can go over here and then drop a, and then get a Dorito. Yeah, no, he drops a Farmer. He knows what's up. Now, difficult choice for Nalaheim. Do we go here and block off this Farmer? <gasps> yes, we do, I think. I think this is what we do. I think this is what we do. Yeah. Yeah. There are reasons for this. Because there's still one dagger tile that fits over here, and we can't really afford our opponent having it. And then if we go over here, we still have uh, a crossroads and a straight line to go here. And if we want, uh, if let's say our opponent draws a Dorito and blocks the opportunity to connect through a crossroads, then we can get a crossroads here and drop a farmer like this as green, loop all the way around through the dagger. It's complicated, but it works. This is just a fascinating endgame, but this move in particular, that was just so beautiful by the play with the green meeples, I mean... <sighs> yeah, agree. I think blue rushed with this uh, yeah, invasion from outside, from uh, on the left. I think there were other options, maybe on Man. the bottom, but he tries now. I can't I, I blame blue, like it's, I, I still feel like it was like it's worth it, honestly. In the meantime, we get an update that uh, Lawyer of Ukraine equalized against a Storm Fear. So immediately after this, we'll be heading to their decider if they're going to still be playing. Okay. Mm. Mm. Dagger, dagger, dagger. Yes. Dagger, <laughs> dagger. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, Why, oh, Netherheim? Oh. Why? And now Vanilla Cap. I think I know. I think basically he decided that he has like an 80 something, 83% chance to win. Because in order for Mate to win, he needs to draw this and the Dorito. But I feel that this is exactly what's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to draw this and the Dorito. And because uh, now currently the Slovak player has a 60, what, 8, uh, like 66% chance of winning. He just needs the Dorito. Uh, Otto has no way to counterattack. The remaining tiles are Dorito, Crossroads, and something else. Not sure what exactly. Yeah, vanilla Cap are all five out? One, two. Oh, no, Vanilla Cap! Yeah, so this is like a... What is that? I think he miscounted. Miscount, yeah. So all monasteries are, are out. Oh, with Road, I mean. But I think it was just his understanding. Oh, yeah, it was 100%, yeah. Because Mate, it was a hundred uh, mm -hmm. percent right. Because he was bound to draw one of these two tiles. Exactly. And exactly. I think we witnessed the mistake. I think it was really um, it, Green actually got himself worse probabilities. He needed to cut off this meeple before connecting these meeples. Exactly. And Mate will win the field, and will win the game, and will have a stunning upset. Crazy. This is just incredible. Who voted for Nellerheim? Also, me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, everybody Not voted for Nellerheim, but. Uh, well, certainly yeah, but... the Slovak player makes it easier in this <laughs> tournament for everybody else by eliminating such a powerhouse. Crazy, crazy, crazy to do. And, hmm? and Nellerheim ran out of time? 
I see now. Oh, okay. So then this was uh, this was a win no matter what. Because reminder that, of course, uh, if you lose on I... time, you lose the game. Even after these heavy losses, like Nalaheim still uh, at a comfortable 837 rating. I'm pretty sure that's a bit of a consolation. But, um, well, congratulations to Mate. Stunning performance. Like this last game with Farmers, with this gambling, just leaving these cities lying around. Loving that stuff. Uh, <laughs> And I think in the end, it's really the experience in field fight. Exactly. So Nalheim is saying strong field play, which is also mm -hmm. a note to future self. Like, if you're playing against player who's very good with fields, try to bring a game <laughs> in such a way that does not start field fights. So, think so. Yeah. if I am paired up against Mate, I will try and uh, do exactly that. Commiserations <laughs> to all our Finnish fans. Congratulations to all our Slovak fans. I'm going to update the score. Let's the players exchange pleasantries in the chat. I honestly, my prediction was that Nalaheim was going to sweep this 2 0, but the Slovak veteran shows that he has teeth. But we don't have enough time to witness all the pleasantries in the chat or to analyze this game overly deeply because now another decider is taking place between Estronthia of Spain and Lawyer of Ukraine. Started 11 minutes ago. Both players playing really fast. And here, 14 tiles remaining. The Spaniard is 11 points ahead on the scoreboard. Let's try to make sense of this position as soon as I adjust the screen. So, um, Bogdan, go ahead, your analysis. Yes. <laughs> yes, so I see a ruin which is quite big for blue. I see two monasteries for blue. I see a field for blue. So I see a lot of features for blue, actually. And uh, I don't see how green can... Oh, okay, he, he attacked the field on, uh, on, on the bottom. But... Uh... He's quite blocked with two meeples on, on the CT. I need to count some tiles also. So how many, for example, crossroads do we have? There is one left. Okay. So he still has the chance. Am I right? So there are yes. on one. Uh, there is one crossroad left. He has the chance to connect. Uh, the farmer uh, green extra has the chance value. to value. Exactly. With four point extra value. Yeah. Actually, I think that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, if you want to be fancy ahead. about it, like, if, for example, if, if the crosser does not draw drawn until his last move, he, on the penultimate move, he can drop a farmer here, and with <laughs> one crossroads move, bring in this guy here, and this guy over way here, and even win a majority on the field. But of course, lawyer now... Oh, actually, I think we missed another green farmer at the bottom. Look at that no, guy I... over here. Yeah, 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 I see. Oh, you saw that, okay. Yeah, I saw it. Uh, yeah, he needs a, a curve to connect, yeah. Take the field. For me, it, it is always hard to, <laughs> to observe the green farmers, but I think it's a strategy to play with green <laughs> for mm -hmm. that <clears throat> purpose, yeah. Well. So is there a way to, yeah. I've, I still think that blue has uh, an advantage here, even if, uh, yeah, green attacks the farm heavily and needs also good tiles for uh, for that but look this is the third monastery for blue and has a good spot for it or um, I, I don't know should he go for that uh, how about we just drop a farmer put... here yes on the yes, left yes 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 feels like it's important Ooh, mm -hmm. and you know what we could also do yeah. as uh, blue? I think at some point as blue we should drop an insurance farmer over here, where I said green should drop a farmer, so that if green got, got, gets a crossroads to place over here, this move would automatically bring me into the field as well. Huh. Lawyer Makes just sense. takes the monastery. Probably Farmer, regretting yes. this. Ooh, a strong <laughs> so just goes all in on the field. Mm -hmm. I like that. <laughs> mm -hmm. But again, is the field enough? Because blue, I think so, right? Because the the ruin is not that big, and green mm -hmm. has also this yeah eight point city. 
a ruin. It's eight point. It's uh, yeah, worthing a monastery. Well, there are these two monasteries. Okay. Honestly, like these green meeples should be illegal. It just actually, exactly. interestingly, <laughs> they are illegal at the World Championship, quite literally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you are playing uh, with the streamed table on the stream yeah. table, because yeah, but uh, on on the other tables are, are I, I think they are allowed. Still, right? Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's it's sneaky <laughs> to play some farmers like uh, the one on the bottom, the green farmer. It's very hard to to, to observe. But it is there. Oh, I need to move the board a little bit. So um, maybe somebody in the chat counted the points. That would be nice to get your help. It's kind of difficult to get into this position. I guess lawyer needs to decide, like, does he have enough with the field or not? I presume that this monastery move indicated that blue thinks that he can win without the field. Um, a bit color me dubious. Maybe. No, he just does not care. I was going yeah, to say but... something else. <laughs> but Estrecio <laughs> now drew also the, the yeah, uh, the crossroad. Bam, here? Bam. Or here? Uh, well, I guess here, like, why, why not just place the tower where it belongs? Ooh, this is risky. Because blue can re-attack. Actually, blue can re-attack either way. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was the same. Uh, I think, yeah, he feared that blue could attack, but no, actually, it was safer to to place it. Yeah, um, yeah. Blue yeah, cannot exactly. re-attack. I mean, of course, yeah. there's this invasion point theoretically, but with the exact tiles, no, no, no. It's not gonna work. It's not gonna work. There isn't a tile that fits into. Oh, there is. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. I forgot about the splitters and the Doritos, but. Huh. Okay. So it's game for green, right? Here. Yep. Nice. And match for green, I presume. And match and match for green. How is the uh, the score evolving? So it was one zero four ah okay. One zero four uh, strong Theo. Yeah, exactly. One zero four is strong Theo and then yeah. Unfortunately, we did not uh, witness <laughs> much of this game, but uh, it was an interesting field fight. And uh, yeah, I think green with better tiles to connect to the field. Yeah, the field made all the difference. 22 points confident win for the Spaniard, and he mm -hmm. eliminates the Ukrainian advancing to the quarterfinals. So congratulations to uh, David from Spain, mm -hmm. which means we but, had yet another decider. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, but the field was 18 points. So I don't think if he, yeah, he blue connected, then it wouldn't be enough to equalize. Right, right, right. Yeah, so there's really just not all that much yeah, what could but... have been done. Good. So a lot of Spanish players in chat. Actually, uh... I know what could have been done. Okay. Over here. No, I think this loss is def. Well, it's kind of a difficult endgame position, but uh, certainly the Ukrainian player has to have some food for thought regarding these this monastery, like. Are these were these six points really that important, or were, or were it was it better to place a three point farmer, with the potential of getting more farmers and with the potential of reinvading this field, and it does seem that uh, blue could have had the field for himself with the right tile runout. So certainly, it's not just the luck, but also certain choices. But in Carcassonne, exactly. just in, in life, well, you make your choices and then you're stuck with them. And then you need to live with them for the rest of your life. Anyway, uh, too dramatic. 
now I see that a lot of all the Spanish fan in the chat. Yes. Yeah, yeah, a lot of stuff uh, happening in the chat. Also, Tomas is here. Also, Nellerheim joined the chat eventually. So I think Otto, you you did the prioritization mistake at the end. You had the crossroad to cut off the farmer on the left, and uh, I think you you chose to connect. But yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, Bogdan. Rub it in. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Rub it in. No, no, no. I I will stop. <laughs> but it's, uh, it is what it is. Yeah. No, it's fine. Like um, it's I I like that about Carcassonne. It's kind of just really. You know, you you practice facing the consequences of your own actions. It's just so beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Mm. So, anyway, uh, <laughs> regarding that, Mate is definitely like a force to be reckoned with. Like his field moves were actually really, really good, and uh, the connection from the outside I, I i was critical about it at first too but the whole point is that this would force um nalaheim into this choice where you either complete your own field connection or you cut off your opponents and um mm -hmm. yeah 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 but now nalaheim explains in chat that he thought that there is another road monastery in the in the game Oh, miscounts. Yeah. Ay, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. Well, anyway, happens to the best of us. Well, literally, just did. Literally, yes. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. But, but monasteries uh, with road are, are quite sneaky to, to, to be observed <laughs> mm -hmm. sometimes. Yeah. But it, yeah, we really enjoyed the games, the auto. So <laughs> very good Carcassonne level. And we know Matei, so I hope that you also knew Matei before <laughs> your game because Matei is a well known player in the. Yeah, live Carcassonne Championship. So I think he played the most semifinals or something like this in the yes. World Championship. He has uh, come the... close like so many times. Yes. And I think the player to whom he loses most often is um, uh, the Czech, Martin Moises. Yes, the Martin, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like all, all the time. It's like either semifinals, finals or uh, whatever. Well, anyway... Since we have uh, some good half an hour before the start of the next game, we're not stopping the stream. We still have a lot of things to do. First of all, I'm going to remind you, of course, about the giveaway. If you want to win this copy of Carve, uh, this is a game about Jarls and Vikings. I'm sure many of you will enjoy that, especially if you have any Nordic ancestry or interest in Nordic culture or just non-competitive board games in general. This is also a special game because this was my prize for the second place at the World Championship and now I'm giving it away. In order to do that, you just need to, by Monday evening, comment either during the stream or by the or comment on any of my videos who you think are going to be the top four players in the Carcassonne Champions League. Uh, the earlier you comment, the better tiebreaker you get. The later you comment, the more information you get. So, for example, now we found out that Nallerheim, basically everybody's pick for top four, has been eliminated. Oh, well, I guess that makes your prediction easier, right? So, uh, Bogdan, are you going to put Mojacello in your top four? Or if I, were you yeah, that impressed I... by Mate? Yeah, if if I yeah not really yeah so <laughs> if I remember if I if if, if I remember correctly I said Nellerheim or Musacello depending what happens in the game of Nellerheim so I will just pick Musacello but I am not sure about the order so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I will still take some time so Mate is very strong still in in online Carcassonne which I think it's a bit different than the live Carcassonne then uh, yeah he's still um, um, yeah maybe needs to improve or at least I see better players in in uh, online Carcassonne than Mate is currently now but he's overall a very very good player and has this field uh, yeah um, a strategy or field play very uh, yeah evolved let's say so I, I really enjoy watching Mate He's also but, incredibly fast because I think it's not an accident. I think because uh, we saw that Nalaham actually lost on time as well, in addition to losing on the board, and because the, because he was in time pressure, because just Mate makes his move uh, incredibly quickly to the point that I think he was 
amongst the top five fastest players at the World Team Carcass on online championships, amongst all the 300 players that participated. Okay, interesting, yeah. Faster than Erwin, I'm not sure. <laughs> Erwin or, was, I think, uh, like close to number yeah. one, or maybe even number one, yeah. But I mean, yeah. well, we know that Erwin's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> I barely, yeah. <laughs> Have time to see his moves. Okay, so somebody is uh, asking who is still playing after these two games. So we have uh, the next game between uh, Viv and uh, Claudio Hocker, right? Mm -hmm. um, Alexei, and uh, this will start in uh, 40 minutes. Yep. And uh, Eduardo is asking, do we have to pick the top four in order? Yes, so definitely the important thing is to figure out who is going to be the champion, then second place, third place, fourth place, and so on. Uh, you can either do that now, but remember, you can always update your prediction, but when you update your prediction, the timestamp also gets updated, so, so then you no longer get the perks for being the early predictor, and so on, and so on. Um, the format is interesting, so there's no bracket. For example, we don't know who is going to be playing against who in the quarterfinals, but it's going to be a draw. So, as far as I understand, out of the eight winners that we're going to have, so that's someone you know, Estronthe, Mate, Mujacello, 71st, one of these two guys, one of these two guys, and one of these two guys, uh, then they will be kind of mixed and matched. So, um, you know, Mujacello could be playing Mate 11, or he could just go ahead and play against his arch nemesis and uh, good friend, someone you know. I think these two have played like 300 games between each other, some some sort of ridiculous number on Board Game Arena. Kind of like Nalerheim and myself, uh, Nalerheim happens to be literally like my most frequent opponent from all the players around the world. I think we've played like, yeah, we've played like 300 games as well. <laughs> Just with one opponent, so um, and also learned a lot from each other in the process. Um, Vladimir is saying that Mate spent one forty four, one thirty three, and two fourteen in terms of time in the games at the World Team Caracas and Online Championships against Vladimir. Yeah, that's his. That's his fast, to say the least. <laughs> <laughs> And, and Thomas says something very interesting. So he uh, ended up with 14 minutes on the clock <laughs> in the live game with the 15 minutes <laughs> at the beginning. Great. Okay. That is ridiculous. Like, <laughs> you play a one minute game. That, that is no. Like, how do you do that? Uh. <laughs> But, yeah, but you know what? Time is also part of the game. It's, I very often think like in chess, uh, this is the same thing that many players say, oh, you know, I had such a great position, I only lost because of time. No, you just need to replace the only, lost because of time. That's like just as a part of the game as, you know, making a blunder uh, or getting lucky or unlucky. So, um, yeah. You know what I suggest that we do, Bogdan? Because we still have time, why don't we go through one of the games between Lawyer and Astronthio and just analyze it and see what happened? Yes, let's do it. Yeah, you can pick one or the first one or the second. Uh, or maybe I... the guys in chat could, could just pick. <laughs> let's let's or, have or a look. Let's pick the one which with the closest point difference. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think it was not that close, if I remember correctly, or around 20 or so. The, the last one was around 20. Okay, Board Game Arena is acting out, of course it is. <laughs> okay, so I have an update. Th that's great. So Vika really wants to predict me losing in the finals. Uh, lovely against self-evident <laughs> two whom i won against in the semi-finals of the world championship so i'm 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 not giving him a chance to for a rematch one thing that i'm happy about is that in the semi-finals and finals it's not a best of three but it's a best of five so it's as, as close as you can have to have actually the better play winning the game and and also in quarterfinals right 
I or think in quarterfinals best of it's still five. best of three, but yes, we can, we no. can check. Or oh, best I, of five? I, I remember it was best of five, but you can check, of course. All right, let's check that a little bit later. Let's look at the first game, because Lawyer had like 45 points. How he ends up with 45 points, that's pretty interesting. It means there was a lot of blocking. <laughs> okay, so yeah. I'm going to open this game, and you just simply comment whenever there's something note. What did I do? I comment when there's something noteworthy, because we're not going to have a time to do like a deep dive as we do in our viewer games analysis streams. Which also reminds me that I haven't held a viewer game analysis stream. Basically, I haven't done really much other than stream uh, this uh, Carcass on Champions League. But this reminds me one more thing. Tomorrow, there's a stream which is not the Carcass on Champions League at 7.30 UTC. I will be streaming uh, the Tournament of Streamers. The Meeple Podcast Tournament, created by uh, the host of uh, Meeple Podcast, Joaquin Calzado. Uh, it is a tournament of 18 Carcassonne personalities who are streamers or other or in other ways contribute to the development of the game. Um, actually, 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 Meeple Podcast. Uh, let's have a look at this. Nope, 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 nope. Yeah, let's talk about this first. Never mind the analysis. So there's another tournament going on. It's uh, and Carcassonne streamers are participating. I'm also participating. Tomorrow I'm streaming not myself. I'm streaming uh, Nico Velemans, the creator of Carcassonne Belgium, against Elias Mochan, a streamer from Mexico, whom many of you know. Uh, but the format is very similar to our Champions League. It's a round robin of 18 players. It's a, uh, it's a. Uh, uh, what do you do with cookies, Bogdan? Do you just do the same? Because I, since this option appeared, I like always to go through them and like and click reject everything. But I can't admit to understanding what I'm doing. Um. Anyway, I like going on a rant. So this is the Meeple podcast. A very interesting podcast. Basically, 170 episodes in English and Spanish. Um, Joaquin has interviewed, well, many players. Myself included, we have two interviews with him twice. But I'm trying to see... Yeah, there's going to be something here about that tournament. KK Spam is asking, is MSO Carcassonne happening soon? Yes, the Mind Sports Olympiad Grand Prix is happening this Saturday, actually. So there will be two qualifying tournaments on Saturday, one in the morning, European morning, so that Americans can play, one in the evening so that Asians can play. No, vice versa. The, the opposite, yeah. Um, and then the final stage of that tournament for those who qualify is going to be on Sunday. So yes, it's going to be a very eventful uh, weekend of Carcassonne. I'm planning to participate in the qualifying tournament. I really hope that I get to participate in the final stage as well. But in case I don't, I will be streaming that. So hopefully you won't see a stream from me in the weekend. That's all I can say. Anyway. Hmm. When was that? I mean, he's so prolific, it's just... Uh, but at some point... Oh yeah, there we go. Meeple Podcasts Guest Challenge. Um, actually, you know what? We're gonna deal with that later. I'm gonna tell this all about you tomorrow. But basically, there's this another cool tournament that has... Carcassonne streamers and personalities gathered. And it is entertaining. This is what I can sell. This is what I'm streaming tomorrow. Um. <laughs> yes, I do appreciate Nalheim for you to get for to getting to 862, but not more. Uh, when you rewatch the stream, I have to admit you're gonna see some Schadenfreude. Well, not Schadenfreude. 
after that second game. Anyway, let's just have a look at this. So how did Estronfield win? We are going to use... No, 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 no. This is a book about music. I should also probably remove <laughs> personal bookmarks <laughs> from when I stream. Anyway. All right, so we're going to go through the game. And Bogdan, whenever you see anything, any interesting moves, uh, do let us know if you want to comment on something. Also, for our guests, if you have any questions to uh, Bogdan, who is also known as Game Over on Board Game Arena and former captain of Team Romania in a variety of tournaments, uh, then do let us know in the chat. Or if you have questions for me about anything, preferably Carcassonne related. Okay, so a bit of a mistake if you ask me. The move here as lawyer is to go over here instead. Some opening in precisions. Basically, when, when the road starts like this uh, by one player, it's important to try and disrupt that road pretty quickly to prevent to prevent this guy from drawing something exactly like he drew. And these small imprecisions do add up. Whoa, okay. I can see somebody's meeples getting blocked. Yes, 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 yes. So this here was a much safer space. Uh, but let's see if that's... Ah, okay, so he's not getting blocked, but as a result, look at this. Just because of this placement, this meeple became vulnerable and Blue didn't have time to collect this empty city cap. Blue was forced to try and save his meeple. And this gives times a strong theo to collect the empty city cap. And there's and the result getting more points. So the play with the green meeple is just playing more precisely. Interesting. Oof, that's fun. <laughs> that's some meeple over here. I guess I get the idea, but it's very, very extravagant. All right, so Pavlo is predicting Alexi, Viv, someone you know, and Muzacello as the top four. I'm honored to be in your top four. I will try and do my best to get there, starting with tomorrow's match at 2 p.m. UTC against the Czech player with screen name Posse. So now finally Estronfio kind of makes it harder for Lawyer to complete his city. Beautiful. Yes. Now a blocking attack against this Estronfio's meeple and also threatening to get the tile that goes here to kill off this meeple completely. But it is the Spanish player who has 13 points ahead on the scoreboard. Very, very interesting. Ah, now trying to build up a city like this. I've noticed that the Spanish player is very generous with his meeples. He just does not care what happens to them. Ooh, lawyer chooses not to meeple this monastery. I'm not sure how... This has to be... Uh, I'm, I'm so surprised. This is just so conservative. Uh, just taking two points. Of course, it creates an attacking platform against these cities, but uh, certainly this monastery here, I think, would have been a great addition. Pre-finishing a road, having all these green squares around the monasteries, easy build-up for future monastery spots. So, was that the deal-breaker in the game? Maybe. Yes, it was, because now Lawyer is not able to use and not use a third monastery. And had Lawyer had a monastery here and a monastery here, like this game would have been probably so much different because this is such an easy build up around here. So choosing to save his three meeples. Trying to finish the city. Ah, well here a bit of a stroke of luck for the Spaniard. Getting... Uh, the starting tile, which surely we're going to go over here before this people gets a chance to getting blocked. And I think now we know where this game was headed. Anything particular surprising for you uh, at, uh, at this point, Bogdan? 
Uh, yeah, not really. I'm behind 10 or 20 seconds. Ah. <laughs> uh, and uh, so my audio is is fine, but the video is not. I'm watching the, the stream in parallel just to, to see what you show. So, yeah, it's it's hard for me to <laughs> to keep uh, yeah the pace. But, um, yeah, you're right. So the monastery we wrote should have been uh, meepled um, from my point of view. And uh, besides that, I did not see too many interesting ideas of course uh, the spanish player had the starting time which is was a very important um moment in the game finishing the eight point and uh city and the meeple back but i yeah i i don't have anything interesting to say as uh, as i said i'm also behind uh yeah a bit uh, uh yeah I think yeah, one of the like video and the uh, sound. So you, you didn't miss any particular moves really mm -hmm. that were super significant other than the ones that you named. Uh, ooh, we have Mortens. So, yeah. uh, well, Nalheim is saying, gonna throw in a black horse. Of course, betting again on me losing the final. Thank you for that. Uh, well, I'm not sure. <laughs> so someone, Alexei UI Scooty in 71st, who is the black horse here? Okay, finally, thank you, 71 Knives, in to, thank you for believing in me. I do appreciate that. I'm going to do my best to deliver tomorrow. Yeah, it does. Yeah, I know it. No, no, this lost, like, so many monasteries thrown out. And imagine if these three monasteries, three wasted moves, would have been here, here, and here. Like, how different of a game that would be. These are just, like, 30, like, like 24 points or even more. So, um, monasteries win games. It's as simple as that. Which also means that if you get monasteries, use them. Well, lawyer gets a meeple back, so surely that has to be good, but it could be too little too late as lawyer just keeps breaking cities. And you see, now I'm pretty sure Astroncio is going to use his monastery for beautiful eight points unapologetically. And another one is just brutal making it harder to complete oh and now we have a city attack from the play with the green meeples yeah so lots of and we even have a meeple back like sometimes this is very often the case that when you're not afraid to lose something, you're less likely to lose it. When Green was placing a meeple over here on this monastery, Green was not afraid of losing this monastery meeple. It was very close to being blocked, but it's just having the eight points from that meeple was worth it. But if you're willing to let go of something, sometimes it sorts itself out and you get and you have your cake and eat it too. You have both the meeple and the points and 25 point lead for a strong field. so very um, interesting development of course with a bit of stroke of luck but not too much oh i okay. think loyal played too defensively this game yeah with the yeah. monastery so he just uh, threw the monasteries and so on you need to score points <laughs> Um, exactly. Yeah. Okay, so let's see what the Strontheo does here. Uh, is he gonna? I think if you're a Strontheo, you actually you don't go here, but you go here and block off this meeple completely because there are no daggers remaining that fit into this square. So let's see if if my theory is right and how precise is the Spanish player, and he does exactly that. Yes, great move by a Strontheo. Uh, yes, and again, a bit, but now that lawyer has only one meeple, he can only score two points, so it's uh, an interesting dynamic there. Strong just keeps getting city caps. Oh, we have more predictions in the chat. 
Yeah, so now Ham, you're saying that not many predicted 71st to be in the top four, but I've seen his rating and he's like, he's in really good shape right now. Definitely, um, I think he's like quite stable in the 700s, not like grazing the 700s, but uh, just in the 700s all the time. And you really, you can't improve your rating especially with the new, much harsher rating system that Board Game Arena has. You can't really improve your rating without improving your game. So at least it, it became much harder on Board Game Arena to improve your rating without improving your game. Both players exchanging natural blocking moves. It's strong to continue to build a city. Thank you, Santi Blader, for believing in me. So make sure to meeple the like button. This is to all of you who are watching. This would be super helpful. And in case you're here for the first time, then do subscribe if you want more content like this. I am streaming a lot in the next couple of weeks. Lawyer. Blocks a field, a city connection, which of course is a good equity move, prevents green from getting these easy points but it seems like it's too little too late there's just really no chance that green has oh we even have a farmer that's really beautiful precision by the spanish player now we're gonna see another precise move yes exactly trying to connect well Actually, Lawyer, I think, now should risk. Let's see if he risks. So if he doesn't give up, then the move here is to place the city cap like this and place a meeple and just pray that you're going to get the one remaining tri triple city tile. Because how else are you going to win? Does he go for it? Yes, he goes for it. Certainly respecting that. Does he get it? Not immediately. He just gets a defense tile. Oh, no, he doesn't. Ah, instead he just gets an extra point. This I also love this idea. I love this idea. Yeah, now lawyer gets the splitter tile, which is not enough to gain anything substantial more than one point, and... Unfortunately for the Ukrainian player, the critical tile that would have gone into this square has been missed. The Spaniard picks it up and these two meeples are trapped. But let's think about this. <clears throat> 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 20 points on the scoreboard and two meeples back. If blue were to get this Im immediately, maybe like blue could have come close actually. So certainly great effort here from the Ukrainian player. Vika is asking, is lawyer a lawyer? Uh, if we have any from, from Team Ukraine in the <laughs> chat, but I think he's actually not a lawyer. <laughs> Which also makes sense because like, how many people do you know that like identify themselves as their profession? Although I had a classmate who dreamt of becoming a lawyer and all his screen names were like his name uh, underscore lawyer. And he did that like since the age of 10, uh, but he became a masseur instead. And now his screen name everywhere, like his is just his name and masseur. So there are people who identify with their professions a lot. Also, why do I go on so many tangents? <laughs> oh, so he is an actual lawyer. Okay, cool. I assume that it's a useful skill to have in Carcassonne if you're into trash talk. He must be very good with words. So yeah, quite an interesting game with lots of blocking, lots of holes. So certainly creative idea from a Stronfield to meeple this little person over here and kind of blocking that square but giving himself a few city points delaying his opponent's roads 
got a little bit lucky with the tiles, but it seems to me that it's the overall caution of uh, the Ukrainian player that cost him this game and possibly the match because so many monastery tiles drawn. By the way, look at them. All of them are almost completed, even though they were discarded. They could have been over here. The Ukrainian player could have had all that basically for free. But um, again, this is also another interesting thing. He didn't meeple the monasteries in order to conserve meeples. But when you're afraid of losing meeples, what happens? You lose meeples. He sort of was saving meeples for something later. And yet somehow in this game, he was like all the time with just one meeple or fewer meeples than his opponent. So um, quite an instructing game. I think that <laughs> was worth watching. Any further comments about this game from you, Bogdan? We kind of glossed over it. But now that your delay has caught up, I've seen. I assume you're also seeing the final position. Yeah, I I hope I'm I'm audible. So uh, I think fifteen point for the final. Yeah, can you hear me? I think so, right? Yep. Okay, so uh, I think uh, yeah, lawyer scored only fifteen points before the final scoring. And I think you cannot really win games if you score uh, that amount of points during a game. So he he lacked uh, courage, I think. As observed, he uh, used tires to block and uh, uh, yeah, he just not uh, scored points during the game, which is the, the most important thing, I think. So just try to score as many points as you can <laughs> um, and not let everything... Uh, the end of course it was a bit of uh, yeah unfortunate draw sometimes with the triple city that was drawn by Stroncio but yeah if you don't try you <laughs> you will never succeed so I think lawyer just was too defensive and that was it good three minutes until the next game right Yep, so Claudio Jorquera against Vivian Chalot, a well-known French player known not only for his high level of, scale, of uh, skill, but also for uh, certain things that he likes to say in the chat. Uh, there, he had an interview on the Meeple podcast in French with Joaquin Calzado, and those of you who, who listen to French, you might be um, interested in seeing that interview, but Joaquin's first question was like, Tipa, why do you say these things in the chat? And, uh, Viv, and, and Viv went like, yeah, I know I'm a sore loser. Like, there's no denying that. I am what I am. So he kind of, he, he, he owns that, which we can respect. And hopefully today uh, we get some entertainment, not only in the form of Carcassonne, but in the form of trash talk. So... I guess let's just look at the bracket real quick because I need to remind you yet again for those of you who are just joining that I'm giving up this copy of the game Carvey to those of you who, to that one person of you who best predict who's going to win the Carcassonne Champions League and who is going to take one of the four, top four spots. So make your bets until Monday evening. Comment either in the live stream on this chat or on any of my videos. I will see your comments. So, um, we now only need to find out three of the remaining finalists. It's going to be, yeah, just all the three matches at the bottom. These ones have already concluded. So, though, to remind of those of you, Estronthia won, Mate 11 won. Alrighty. Time to start refreshing and see if they started playing uh, Viv. Beautiful avatar has already created the game, possibly started, not started, just created. How are you feeling, Bogdan? Do you have energy to commentate a third match? Because I know it's midnight now in Romania. Or are you no nocturnal? 
Yeah, it midnight here, but I'm 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 feeling I'm feeling well. Yeah. Good to know. <laughs> well, it's also now 11 yeah. p.m. I'm a bit France. pissed because I have this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's quite late, so I'm I'm a bit pissed off this lag. So yeah, <laughs> ah. but uh, I hope that I will uh, keep pace. If uh, <laughs> it's quite quite weird, but yeah, I hope I will keep the pace with uh, the game in parallel that I will open. So board is almost open. They start it. And you will get and to live with the, the best tile? best starting tile. Of yes. course. Live with the best starting tile. <laughs> yeah. So Viv outrates his opponent almost 100 rating points, slightly below the threshold on Master, Claudio Horqueta on even 600 rating points. This is actually a bit of low for Viv, he normally is above 700 and his personal best is something like 830, so um, just incredibly strong and fast player, so it will be entertaining. Claudio now trying to prevent Red from completing his city and I think he hopes to get straight line, straight line and then some sort of tile that goes over here, then block the square, trap Red's meeple at three points and then just keep building his road endlessly for a winning mini battle. But will he succeed? We will find out in just a few moves as Viv gets the opening advantage as being the first player who draws a remarkable monastery, four points preparing a second monastery spot, load, lo lots of green squares, easy to build up, and controlling Claudio's two-point road. This is a dream spot for a monastery, uh, and also Viv is the first on the scoreboard by completing an empty city cap worth four points. Claudio presumably is going to finish his city at the bottom. I like that move. The principle of two cities does not apply in these situations. It's too long to explain because both players are playing extra fast, not using their time on the clock. But now Viv has a curve and Viv has thinking to do. He just simply decides to go for the equity move, clean up this road and start a three-point road. Not a problem having two roads pointing in separate directions if you are the French player because still plenty of meeples to use. Still plenty of crossroads or road end tiles that he could draw to get both of these meeple back. So excellent position for the Frenchman. Could not have wished for the better start. Fully agree here, uh, Alexei. Although we have uh, two monastery spots on the bottom and maybe uh, Claudio would draw at least one of the monasteries, the next monasteries, and he could equalize a bit the position. But as you said, I agree that uh, yeah, Viv is... Uh, in a slice advantage here. And now Claudio tries hardly to block the three point uh, meeple on the city. And as you said at the beginning, to continue with the road and to win the mini battle with the uh, road against uh, Ruin. Well, not with that tile, but he gets something with that tile as both players <laughs> retrieve their road meeples and convert their points to the scoreboard. Viv will presumably go over here, yes, exactly, to try and make it harder for Claudio to block this square. But actually, Claudio could go over here and build a loop like this, and then maybe he doesn't mind that much of this exactly. city being finished. Also, uh, this monastery is, of course, very good for red, but since then the board texture changed so much that there are other monastery spots here and here that it will matter now much more who draws the remaining monasteries as opposed to what happens to this monastery with red. Well, it is in fact Claudio who draws the monastery, <laughs> but where do you go? Do you go here and kind of control the square or... Do you go to one of these other spots? He decides to go to these, to this spot, and he wants to place something over here and make it harder for Red to continue his monastery. Knowing the Frenchman, I think he's gonna go here and drop a farmer. No, he doesn't. So maybe I don't know the Frenchman that well. Uh, would you have used this splitter to start a farm, Bogdan, or do you like what you yes. did instead? Yes, I would start a farm on the bottom, but yeah. He bet on on this uh, type of getting the point. Um, 
but it pays off now because he he drew also the next city tile and he now has two two cities open and uh, yeah quite a good advantage here as we have so many roads now i don't see uh, yeah a good uh, potential for any farm maybe the one on the bottom but uh, investing in in farmers now is a bit uh, tricky <laughs> So you should be very careful because, yeah, there's um, a closed, let's say. Yeah. Uh, and since uh, both splitters are out already, there will be fewer tiles that can be used to grow a farm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Monasteries, of course, but uh, yeah, not that many. Well, this is a fantastic tile for Viv. I presume he's going to finish his city and start a new one. But Claudia Horkeri is sort of catching up. So this road is very nicely uh, plugging its way in to these two cities of red. And the ideal scenario is that green will stay at these five points for the price of one meeple. And red will stay at these three points for the price of two meeples. So that will be a major, major gain for the play with red meeples but it's gonna not, not gonna happen because red immediately drew the tile that fit into the square and this just looks obscene honestly <laughs> um yeah this is quite the draw i mean of course the frenchman uh knows how to take advantage of the draw and we saw from the recent uh, game that we just analyzed between astronthia uh, and lawyer that not always a good draw guarantees the win of the game Oh, I like that move, starting a new city, uh, trying to bother this guy over here, hoping to block. So Claudia wants to not only get points, but also disturb his opponent. And at least over here in this area, he did manage, uh, at the price of a couple of tiles, to secure his win. Because this guy will be trapped at three points, uh, whereas this green road is worth six points, and it will be able to continue and continue. But then... Is winning a mini battle even enough when you're down like 20 something points on the scoreboard? And when Viv gets like <laughs> the, the deck. Crazy, just crazy. <laughs> okay, this is something else. <laughs> he draws the tiles uh, face up, you know. So. Mm -hmm. uh, he just picks the tiles he needs, so. Thank you, That's Kibbelo, a huge advantage for. for... And me? Yeah, it is a huge advantage to me. Well, at least Cloud, you know, gets a monastery, and this monastery will likely see the light of day. It will get the meeple back, and then maybe he gets over here, like gets a triple city tile, starts a new city, gets a crossword over here, scores four points for the road, then maybe gets something, something over here, attacks this farm. Like, there is mm -hmm. still ways how Claudia could proceed. Yeah. Yeah, but there are no let the left-handed uh, daggers, for example. So the monastery on the bottom could be easily blocked if he wants to do that <laughs> at some point. So there are ways to to catch up, of course. But the ways we've just drawn the tiles, then I don't see it happening. So yeah, twenty-seven points on the on the scoring board. It's a lot. <laughs> I see that the monasteries are really vulnerable now for, for Claudia and he really needs those meeples back. This is the problem. Hmm. Okay, three point road. Yeah. He also needs quick points, yeah. Quick points is certainly a good way to try and climb back into this game because this also means that you are getting quick points and your opponent is not getting quick point tiles. And for Viv, like all he really needs to do is just score here and there. It doesn't need to engage in any big fights. Like st he doesn't even need to like build up his field because if he builds up his field, then he could lose this field in the future. He just like needs to stay put. If yep. you ask me. So now he uh, spends a value tile on blocking Green's Monastery. Absolutely worth it. Definitely Meeple is worth much more than this tile. Claudio is now trying to finish his Monastery. And what will Vivian do? 
Can we just start a loop? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's only one regular curve remaining, but there's still some crossroads. I like loops, or we even, oh, I like this even better. Exactly, exactly, yeah. Don't let your opponent to, yeah, get meeples back to score points. Just stick to your opponent because you are ahead. So you don't have to, to struggle too much. Well, beautiful move by Claudio, starting a little mm -hmm. farm, mm -hmm. finishing the city, hoping to get a city cap and some extra points for that. As Viv, you just like, you just go here and start a road, I think. Like you just play normal moves. You also might go over here because the idea, nah, I don't like it, but anyway. Mm -mm. So I, guess, yeah. I, guess, I think here we see the first misstep by Viv. The idea of this move was to restrict the city cap, but it actually ended up helping uh, his opponent because now Claudia was successfully able to take four points for the city, three points for the field, and was able to do that in such a way that does not create a vulnerable uh, square, that does not create another entry point uh, for red. So... Um, I don't think it's going to cost him the game, but minor concessions, minor concessions. Let's see if they end up adding up. Claudio wants to develop his field at the bottom. Really, probably the only uh, route to victory for the Chilean player. Let's see if it's successful or not. Viv has draws a monastery tile. Could just go over here and start a monastery. Like, not the worst idea ever, because he's going to get a meeple back from the city cap in all likelihood. If he can... He can always bail out and get a meeple back from this city. Speaking of this city, by the way, one idea for Claudio to come back into this game would be to go over here. Actually, right now. Do we do that? Are we crazy? Do we just finish the city or do we go over here and try to take over the city, hoping to get one of the three crossroads uh not the crossroads but triple cities with the road end what do you think bogdan time to gamble big or do we just play small ball i think it will be time to gamble at some point because otherwise you you are left behind but not but now maybe says later Claudio. yeah not now yeah yes 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 also, interestingly, I see... yeah, yeah, this, yeah, uh, this fields could be connected with a loop. So if Claudio yes. wants to connect the fields and then to yeah increase the stakes and overtake it, <laughs> uh, maybe this is one strategy. So he needs Claudio needs now to create big features, and we, this is uh, maybe the winning path. Just mm -hmm. grabbing small points, but also your opponent grabs. You see now the, the second uh, cap with uh, crossroads. So it's a very, very good tile to, to grab easy points. Which is exactly what it to... does. Mm -hmm. So do we do it now? I think we do it now. Yes. We might I even so, meeple also. it. And then we just hope to meeple something here and then connect like this. No, he doesn't do it just yet. He instead wants to continue his roads. That was the last curve, right? Yeah. Mm. It's, it was now or never, you know? So, <laughs> um. Yeah. So 20 points behind. I don't see how Claudio... Okay, a promising road, but it's not enough. Actually, Viv, if he wants, he can like go over here and even tie this road. Oh, not anymore because... Okay. Um, honestly, as Claudio, let's just let's just go here. Let's try and take over the city. Like it's time. Do it. Do it. Do it. Then we take over. Dorito. Dorito. Bam. No, he doesn't do it. He ch mm -hmm. ch ch chicken it out. If you ask me. Mhm. Mm yeah. Mm -hmm. But there were all three tiles, right? 
happened again. Yes, yes. I think that that's mm -hmm. a legit move. It's it's hard to block. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But not yet. Okay, thanks everybody for including me in your predictions. So good to know that somebody's betting on 71st as well as the winner. Alexi, Mujacello, uh, someone you know. So these are the four. Oh, self evident. So we have five different players who could win this, according to you. Nobody's bet on a strong Theo just yet, but he won the previous duel, just a reminder. Hmm. Okay, that's an interesting move. I like that. I think it was it was yeah, exactly yeah, to prevent defense. the thing they were talking about. It's smart. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And Viv now attacks. This is just filthy. Just gonna, gonna grab these little ruins. I mean, this is clinical. <laughs> there are so many triple city tiles in the deck with six with six tiles remaining. So. That's Actually, yeah. Like most <laughs> yeah, of the remaining tiles are triple cities. Exactly. <laughs> There's exactly. barely anything left. <laughs> I guess like Claudio oh. can go over here, but still they're gonna be too tall to fit into this square. Like uh one, two, three. Oh maybe we go here, like take a nine point farm. Because there is a starting tile remaining, if I'm not remaining, if I'm not mistaken. So if this gets blocked, mm -hmm. we actually get to connect to the farm. It's something. Yeah, he does this. I think Claudia finds a good move, and and Viv doesn't even bother blocking because he knows that there's a starting tile remaining. Claudia's probably gonna take quick points somewhere, maybe yeah. here or here. Takes it in such a way that makes his field. A little bit more and close, not that it's matter. And now Viv, I think he can go over here and block this connection, but he chooses not to because he knows that he doesn't. Does not have need to. it, I think. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Doesn't spend valuable tiles on blocking. Yeah, but I but this would have been a hundred percent block. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. because there are no straight lines remaining. Yeah, but. <laughs> Does not matter, you know. <laughs> uh, wow. Well. If yeah, if Claudio gets into that field, yeah. <laughs> Claudio takes a seven-point monastery. Viv just gets more points and more points, more yep. points. <laughs> the greed. Insane, insane. Ah, yeah. And Claudio does not get his thing. The starting tile, which uh, this guy needed. Yeah, I mean, why you don't mm -hmm. need to block if you can just have all the tiles. Well, I mean, certainly oh. quite an uneven run out, but I say still a strong performance here from the Frenchman, kind of uh, grabbing onto an early lead and then just holding on to it. Claudio tried to create chances with the field at the bottom, but there's only so much you can do as the player of the Green Meeples. Maybe there was a spot where he could have gambled a little bit more with the city connection on the right yeah but um some games in carcassonne you just have to lose it's more about what how do you <laughs> take that loss and does this affect your next game let's see if it does mm -hmm. but oh. one has to notice that there are a lot of city tiles left in the in the deck and the ruins are yeah the next features let's say of the game so but this was not noticed by Claudio, no. Yeah, sorry, you wanted to, to say something. No, no, I just realized that uh, part of our board was covered. Yeah, do do let me know. Thanks for making me, um, thanks for saying that in the chat. Because I sometimes get carried away. Anyway. But yeah, there was a ruin at the left. That's all you need to know. So game two, let's see if the Chilean player manages to 
come back from this. Well, he does get uh, the second best starting tile in Carcassonne, and he gets a six point on the scoreboard and even decides to drop an early farmer. So <laughs> Claudio is doing quite well for himself, getting a bit of an advantage. Viv starts a road. Now Claudio is probably going to start a city over here. Let's see how exactly he does it. I think he chooses the more dangerous approach, but... Um, it is what it is. Viv probably going to continue his road and maybe even drop a farmer. Very open position here, brewing from the start. Anybody's game as it stands now. Yeah, I have to agree here. He can probably, yeah, defend his road, let's say. So he has the option. Oh, okay. Okay, he just dropped a farmer. He had also the option to to place it one uh, one square to the right, and to extend virtually, let's say, the road, without any meeple, or meebling the yeah the field. But this is fine as well, so quite equal position. But the green manages to start uh, the second city, and green is completely is... unperturbed. Uh with creating a monastery spot. He's saying, let's gamble for it. <laughs> Whoever gets the next monastery is going to be a happy person. Uh -huh. Yeah. I feel it's Viv, to be honest, this, uh, this evening. So I think he will get it. <laughs> but yeah, you have to gamble if you want to win such matches. Okay, so now is the real deal. What does Claudio do? Go here, disrupt the city a little bit. This seems a bit weak. We could go here, just start to loop road. Like, nobody canceled points for road. Honestly, we can just go here. We should do something with this curve. Ah, so he hmm. instead creates a 50-50. This is interesting. He felt that Viv will draw the next uh, uh, simple monastery. And he said, okay, <laughs> it's not yours. Let's see, maybe he's correct. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Viv with another dagger, I think. We will count the daggers at the end, but I think Viv drew most of the daggers. Yeah. Oh, now. now this is kind of hard for the, uh, the Chilean player here. This is a very, very vulnerable configuration. Mm-hmm. I don't really like this move. I think it's a bit imprecise. Of course, he got the meeple back, but you leave three points for your opponent, so somehow you just neutralize your your road that you just scored. I think it's Maybe all right. Yeah, just because like if you place it on the left a bit, and of course on uh, ah. yeah, meepling the you see. Maybe it's an option. At least you don't leave this chance for your opponent to equalize your, your road. But anyway, it's just... Uh, well, Claudio yeah. managed to save his meeple, and now look at this. Uh, Viv is now trying to sneak into the city because there's still four tiles remaining that fit, that fit into the square. Moreover, this meeple is about to curve its way in uh, and get a two versus one majority, which is why Claudio is forced to invest into a shared feature just to prevent said disaster scenario. So a little concession, concession by concession, Viv is holding on to his advantage. Of course, Claudio has the one with more points, um, three points extra, but as a result of this monastery, Red is doing slightly better. Especially now when he gets a meeple back soon. He likes drawing city cap, now it's ahead on the scoreboard. Now move for Claudio. Could continue his city, but a move which I like is just going over here and trying to attack the city with a third, fourth meeple, <laughs> creating a big ruin. Like, go for it. Honestly, also, like, let's see some gambling. Why did we just not go over here and drop a farm and hope for a nine-point monastery? Let's just, let's just see all them fireworks. Or, as the French player, you could go over here, start a new road, create some pressure on the square, and at the same time, hope to continue this road with a straight line and a bunch of curves. Certainly a possibility. Oh, he rebuilt a really nice road, which Claudio, of course, takes. <laughs> I think not meepling it is a mistake. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, yes, mm-hmm. because Claudia can now go here and he can meeple this thing. Honestly, like it sometimes works. Meeple, meeple, meeple. Do it. Yes, of yes, course. yes, yes. <laughs> and, and now, now what does Viv do? Viv Closest uh, the city on the left. No? What? The greed. Crazy. The greed, the <laughs> audacity. It's, like, I know he doesn't want Crazy. to spend the shield at all. He doesn't care about preventing the disaster scenario. It's all the greed for this person. Mm-hmm. Okay. Sometimes being greedy pays off, but I don't know. <laughs> I hope for a decider <laughs> anyway. <laughs> uh, let's see a big ruin there. Let's see. Yeah, I, I'm not in sleeping mood, so I'm kind of lo- rooting for Claudio here just so that we get to see another game. <laughs> well, that's good. I assume this towel goes here. Five points, meeple back. Mm, I don't know. I don't know about that. This could be a regret for. Mm hmm. If Red draws a, a crossroad, then he will just uh, steal four points. <laughs> Three points, yeah, there's a difference, but so okay, no monasteries here. Oh, good, yes, of course. Let's close the city. What? Oh, of course, that's a big battle now. Okay, now actually do this. Go there. Just do that. Never mind the two points, or do you take the two points, Bogdan? I'm not sure. I will connect. I think. I want to see the big city fight because then yes, there's still a splitter, mm-hmm. by the way. And also, if uh, red connects, then there's always an opportunity to reconnect as well. Red chooses to not do that. So what does Claudia do? Does Claudia reconnect now? I don't know. There's only so many meeples that you have. This is it wouldn't one of... connect hmm? now, I think. Yeah, it's too. Um, I don't know. It's too risky to to try to reconnect now or to attack now the the ruin. I'm not sure. I leave a a cap also. Is it yeah, crazy sorry, to just wanted... drop it here? Mm-hmm. Like I have a feeling this is gonna work. Like on the right. Yes, yes, I like this with a farmer. Okay, so Viv, <laughs> of course, how could that, how did that happen? Viv won a coin flip. Finally, that guy caught a break today. Yeah, and of course, just immediate nine points and uh, starting a city cap, preparing to finish it and drop a farmer. Okay, now, Claudio, don't go here. Yes, yes, yes. Excellent prioritization. Exactly. The one which we missed yeah. from Mate in the first game against Nalaheim, but he knows him, his stuff. He knows we can't allow the guy with one meeples to just finish a f- city and drop a farmer. We are going to be the guy that finishes the city and drops a farmer. Oof, that's rough, rough, rough. He's about to get blocked, but he's unperturbed. He says, you block me, I block you. Mm-hmm. I guess that sort of works. Well, there's still two tiles that fit into this square. Yeah, exactly. But at least if Viv gets that tile, this automatically brings the green meeple into this field. So... We could start a new city over here, actually. That could work. We could start a new city over here and then try to block the square, but I think maybe we're better off just letting Red finishing the city for the sake of tempo. Or we could get a uh, crossroads and score four points for the road. Ah, I like this. This is really neat. Mm hmm. But yeah, why not dropping the cap on your field? I I understand, of course. So Red cannot close it without blocking his own meeple. But you need to just uh, yeah drop cities on your field. Yeah. Yes. Oh, of course, Ooh. of course. <laughs> Crazy. Uh, Crazy. I mean, it's not like inconceivable to draw that tile, but the timing is just. Mm-hmm. Uh... Like that was that was it. I think that was it. It's how do you mm-hmm. it's so hard to be Claudio like 
Well, anyway, if it's hard, we don't complain. We try and think of a plan, how to make things work. Persist so in the face of adversity. Oh, this is painful. There's only one tile that fits into this square. This simple block, so effective. Claudia, of course, can still ha take four points over here, which is what I would do, and then try very hard to play against these cities, but there's only so much that you can do. The problem is that, mm -hmm. yeah, Viv uh, just uh, is about to close the cities on the right, and that will be really, really painful. Oh, of course, with tempos and so on. Yeah, trying to connect the field, but it's all is not lost. You know what would be a annoying tile? Okay, don't meeple this just yet. I think some sort of tile that connects these two cities together and then blocks them. Like, that's doable. Yeah. At this point, I think we're both overtly rooting for Claudia, right? There's just no need yes. to hide anything. <laughs> I'm not hiding, yeah. <laughs> I want to see a decider at least. Mm -hmm. so maybe like but something... it would be hard to be honest. So yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, it, it would be hard for Claudio to uh, look. Oh, okay, it's Claudio. I, I thought that Viv drew the the, yeah. <laughs> the Dorito. Honestly, okay. as Claudio, j just go here and drop it. Okay, this is better. Oh. This is better. This is smarter. Oh. Ah, but uh, oh yeah, this is huge. Uh, the way Viv drops a farmer because there's still a way to connect into the field. I believe. I believe there is no a real coming back from this. Well, the bright side for the um, Chilean player is that this square is sort of kind of blocked anyway, because there's no Doritos or dividers that left fit into this square. There's all the triple city plus something, something, but uh, I wouldn't worry about it too much. As Claudia, what I would do is I would maybe go here or here, trying to take quick points and then hoping that we can manage to block this guy somehow. Ah, okay, I, I get it, I get it. I I don't think the blocking was important, but you know. Yeah, you feel unlucky and you just block <laughs> to be to be safe. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, but but that's the point. Like when, when you're behind, mm -hmm. you you can't yeah. assume that you're gonna be unlucky. You have to assume that you're gonna be lucky. Like this is the thing yeah. about probability: is that just because you are like unlucky half of the game doesn't mean that it's gonna keep happening. It also doesn't mean that the tides are gonna be turned. It just is. It is what it is. It will be what it's gonna be, and you have to be prepared for anything. Fully agree. There are two uh, vanilla caps, right? Still in the deck. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> Claudia yeah, just look. needs to draw both of them. That's it. Mm -hmm. There is another dagger for Viv. Ah, yes, there is another dagger for Viv, but not the one. Well, yes, <laughs> that he needed. <laughs> Although I do, mm -hmm. I do think that this time he actually draw four daggers already. But I was thinking, as Claudio, maybe we should have gone over here. Just try to create the big ruin and then hope to take it over. Yep. Although it's kind of hard because the only access point is from here and it's blockable, but still. What's the winning path for Claudio here? Is there one? <laughs> yes, I think that's a good move. Um... I like it. I think, first of all, Claudio needs to draw both city caps and act like he's mm -hmm. going to draw both city caps. So, for example, with the first city cap, here's what we're going to do. We're going to place it over here. I'm going to score an eight-point city with the triple city like this. Yeah. Or, 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 even better. No, here, here's the win. It's not that hard. So, we take... A city cap, place it over here. Take a second city cap, place it over here. Drop a farmer, connect to the field. Bam. We have a 15 yeah. point advantage on the field. Which is... Not sure if it's enough, but it's something. Okay, okay. Now, now, do it. 
go here, just... Yeah, we could leave this alone. Okay, okay. Uh, yes, yes, dagger. Ooh. Yeah, okay, at least these are eight points. But of course, this means that Viv is guaranteed to draw one of yes. these two things. So there's exactly. not that much that we can do. Viv immediately goes over here. Does Claudio get some sort of reconnection option? I don't think there is one. There's just no platform for reconnect. Or is there? Ah, uh, no. Well, hmm. uh, we did what we could. We did what we could. But still, the pain is still there, you know, it's like, you, you, you do mm -hmm. what you can, you know that you don't do anything wrong, but the pain is still there. <laughs> Why do I feel so much for Claudio this time? Yeah. It was a short duel. <laughs> <laughs> but that's it. He thinks of some yeah, ways to invade the field, but there is none with this style. This is what I typically do. I typically spend a long time like, am I really not missing? Like, am I missing anything? Am I mm -hmm. missing anything? Nope, it's closed. Oh, I see many of you are betting on Muzacello. That's honestly a pretty good bet, like underrated player. I think, I mean, uh, one of the reasons why sort of he's not like that heard of that often is because he doesn't play in a national team while well, he played in Lithuania. But Lithuania is not participating every, every year in these tournaments. But, um, of course, incredibly strong. I saw his duel against Loishi. It was just so one-sided. That, by the way, was on Nalaheim's stream. So uh, I encourage you to go watch matches uh, there. A very good commentary from the highest-rated player on Board Game Arena, at least at the moment. Well, before today's evening. <laughs> Well, come on, Claudio. Surprise us with a city cap. Powerlessness. Oh, is there one more city cap remaining? To be honest, I did not count. I... <laughs> I'm already fat with this. Oh, oh no, the, that's the last one. one. That's oh, the last yeah, one. No. Yeah. Okay. I don't know what the remaining tile is. Apparently it's a dagger. Hmm. Who knew? Oh, the <laughs> other one. <laughs> yeah. Well, it the was, other uh, one, of course. <laughs> the other one, of course, the other one. So I, I think mm -hmm. this was the intention of Claudio, yeah. Uh, anyway, still, I mean, good attempt. You gotta give it. By the way, but he he, hmm? he had a chance to pre-build the eight-point city on the left, bottom left. Uh, yes. Claudio with the yeah, hoping for this big one yes, that yes. he got. Yes, yes, that would have eventually. been a five-point city, but still, because it's on his opponent field. Yeah, but, five. Uh... Yes, it's five. It's five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, right. look at this—the salt. I mean, Claudio's not happy. Can in the chat we have. Congrats with a dot. Like it's the it, it's the <laughs> dot for me. <laughs> well mm, and left the chat <laughs> quickly. Yes. Yeah. So well one of the unfortunate things <sighs> that that Viv won both games is because we never saw them say anything from them losing, because they never lost. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Good, that was fast. It's the only duel uh, which ended 2-0 this evening. Honestly, I think this is like the fastest duel I've ever witnessed. Because <laughs> uh, let's say if, if the stream was devoted just to this, it would have been a 38-minute stream. I've never had streams <laughs> this short. Well, well, well. I'm going to so, update the score. Uh, mm -hmm. And congratulate yeah. all the French fans. Yeah, like, I mean, of course he drew well, but he played well as well. Like, he knows if he gets tiles, he knows how to use them. Like, he knows. So, mm -hmm. um... But again, like, and strong he gets performance... Them. <laughs> yeah, and he gets them. But, like, gets strong them. <laughs> performance from the Chile. I don't think he missed any particular chances, like, or got punished for any particular mistakes. Some games you just have to lose. Yeah. Oof. 
so yeah well i'm not sure if you have to put in the passive aggressive dot <laughs> <laughs> but two it's... dots uh, two dots would be more passive aggressive maybe one dot oh. is maybe <laughs> Two dots, like not three, but just two. <laughs> exactly, oh. exactly. <laughs> so that's it's, cool. Uh... So Claudio is still able to keep his cool. <laughs> yeah, that was rough. Well, <laughs> anyway, let's see what kind of matches we're going to have still. Uh, let me just make this a bit bigger. Also, I want to remind you, for those of you who are just joining, but I assume that most of you uh, know that I'm giving away this copy of Carvey to those of you, to that one person of you who best predict who's going to win the championships. You have to either comment during the stream or comment on any of my videos until Monday evening with your predictions, which four players are going to occupy the top four spots. Yeah. Uh, I see oh, many more predictions to register. So let's have a look at the matches. Tomorrow I'm playing against uh, the Czech play with Queen Empo C118. That's going to be at 2 p.m. I have to have some really good sleep before that. Uh, then um, on the 18th, I don't think anybody's going to stream that. Self-evident against uh, Tomasz Proy. Certainly an exciting duel. But this is going to be Sunday, which is the day of the Mind Sports Olympiad Grand Prix Finals. And certainly this will cast a big shadow over any other events in Carcassonne or life in general. How anything else could be more important than the finals of the Mind Sports Olympiad Grand Prix. Uh, and other than the Carcassonne Champions League, a reminder that tomorrow I'm going to be streaming the Meeple, po Meeple Podcast Spreaders of the Game Tournament, Streamers Tournament, essentially, where Nico Velements of Belgium is going to play uh, Elias Mochan of Mexico. Alrighty, uh, so after today's streams, Bogdan, do you have updates to your predictions of who's going to win the Carcassonne Champions League or are you going to stick with your original if you're going to remind us what that were what that was so I will stick with you someone you know who was the third one but Muzacelo was the fourth one I don't remember what was the third one I think it's self-evident self -evident. Or... Yeah. Self -evident. yeah 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 I will stick with that for now but I still uh, yeah will think of the the order mm-hmm Alrighty, well, let's see if any of that comes true. I certainly hope to get in the top four. This is what I will be trying to do my best tomorrow against this Czech player. And thank you all for your predictions. I'll go through the chat and like register them and maybe post a little update or something. You can still uh, change your mind or comments uh, until Monday evening. Just be aware that if you change your mind, then your timestamp is also going to be updated. Mm -hmm. But and what happens if nobody uh, guesses <laughs> the right order? Uh, then we take the. Cl this is a great question. If nobody gets the winner, oh, oh, if nobody gets the right order, there's a, then of course the, the. It's most important to get the winner. If both players get the winner, then uh, it's most important to see who gets the second place, and then it's important to see who gets the third place. I haven't thought this through. I, um, I'll think of some further tiebreakers if necessary, but it's really the timestamp that um, does this. And I'm pretty sure somebody will get the winner, I hope. Uh, but if not, then whoever gets uh, predicts the second place correctly, that will be decisive. I need to think of a system. That's yeah. thank you for bringing this to my attention, Bogdan. This is harder than I thought. <laughs> well, actually, it's easier. I mean, if if many of you predict, if many of you participate, then somebody is bound to select the winner. So we don't have to do go through this tiebreaker thing. 
Um, but I, but I thought that nobody selected Estroncio, so <laughs> I really hope that Estroncio wins this and <laughs> puts you in a really <laughs> yes, uh, yes. bad situation. <laughs> Honestly, then I'm probably just gonna give the game to Estroncio as a Ex prize. Exactly, <laughs> he deserves so, it. So if he really does it, yeah. <laughs> yes, like it's like nobody believed in him, <laughs> which by the way is like he's he's really good. Like he has his own peculiar style, like rated above 700, plays fast creative like very sharp uh very smart in real life by the way so mm -hmm. uh... <laughs> yeah what a, yeah or matei i didn't see matei as well so <laughs> why not so he just uh yeah yeah and like now especially <laughs> that, that he beat mm -hmm. Nallerheim, that he can beat anybody i assume he's gonna have a big confident boost for him mm -hmm. exactly Alrighty, that's it from me, and uh, that's it from us. Thank you, everybody, for the kind words uh, to address to myself and to Bogdan. Uh, and yes, I appreciate you rooting for me tomorrow. I will also be rooting for myself. If nobody streams that, you're just welcome to join Board Game Marine and watch the game. Thank you so much for watching, and I'm going to see you soon.